This is the, do you want to lay back? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. This is the Broken Dreams podcast with yours truly, Abhishank, and I have a very special guest with me today, Rendell. So we met, when did we meet? 2018? Was it 2018? I think it was 2018. 2018? Yeah, yeah. At 7am at the gym? <laughs> so, dude, we went so early. Yeah. It was the early... Uh, what time early did you used to get there? So Waterloo Gym, by the way, but yeah. continue. Sif. What was yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. So, but basically, we went like, I don't know, like 8, 8, 9? You, you got there at 8? 8 or 9, something along those lines. I can't okay. remember. Didn't you have morning class? Bit. Yeah, it was before class. So I think class okay. is in... Because we met when we were... I think it was in my final year. I think Wasn't it, was, it third year? Was it third year? Okay. Dude, There's. it's been a little bit. But I thought, I, I swear I was I was graduating then. Okay. I think it, I think it was in the last year. Okay. Um, you knew like Patrick and stuff like that, right? Yeah, I knew Patrick. I knew Jonathan as well. Yeah, so I think that was, yeah, that was definitely in my fourth year. So yeah. then it was basically fourth year. And I knew that girl as well. I don't remember her name. I think she was dating Patrick at one point. I think so. I think that's how I found oh, out about Patrick. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, that's basically the crew. Then we had a crew back then, yeah. and essentially, it was in my fourth year in 2018. And then, essentially, classes around then were like nine thirty, ten thirty. Okay. So I just gym. Okay. And then I would uh, go into class afterwards. So that was basically the rotation there. Where'd you start working out? 2016. Like in university or high school? Yeah, no, it was university. No, okay. I was, dude, in. You, in high school, I was literally like 50, 60 pounds lighter than where I'm at now. So you were one, I was 110? like 140. 140? I was like 140. At what then. height? Like 5'8", five, 5'7". Five, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, would you consider yourself uh, scrawny in high school? I was, uh, what's the terminology? It was like skinny fat. Okay, got it. You got, you, you know that, uh, you've heard of yeah, that, right? Of yeah, course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so like you skinny were skinny fat. fat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then what, what was, uh, how'd you get into working out then? No, it was Were so you playing any sports in high school or no? It was basically like, there was like a short stint as like, because, uh, you know, Filipinos are like super into basketball. Mm-hmm. So I did, uh, my dad was like really trying to get me into it. So yeah. I did midget basketball for a little bit. I wasn't good. I was like terrible. you played high school basketball? Yeah, high school. But it okay. was like midget was grade nine. Okay. Grade nine yeah. basketball. I was terrible. Okay. And then uh, I did uh, badminton with my uh, girlfriend at the time. Okay. It was pretty good. It was fun. Um... I was like, it was just more just okay with it. Uh, but outside of that, not really. So I was like, not athletic or anything at all. But basically, um, I was just, it was just okay. But okay. essentially I got into it because university, you know, for everyone, like university is like pretty rough. Mm-hmm. And then there was a time where uh, essentially I... Uh, broke up with my girlfriend at the time in university. Was it second year or first? Second year. Uh, that was, was like, second year. Yeah, it was in the beginning of second year. Okay. And then it was like, you know, I went into a Was co-op. that the high school girlfriend? Or was it another uh, girlfriend? It was another girlfriend. Was oh, another so girlfriend. you met her in university? Or? Uh, in, in between university and high school. Oh, that okay. summer. Yeah, that okay. summer. Yeah, Got so it. it was, uh, that was interesting. Did she go to Waterloo as well? No, or? she went to, oh, I forgot where it was. Wealth Humber, I think. And how'd you meet her? Uh, we were in high school. Oh, you guys yeah. went to the same high school? We went to the same high school. Okay, got it. Yeah, and then and essentially then that that's was... how it worked out. Um, okay. And then basically it continued on until uh, university. But essentially, yeah. as you know, um, it's like you mature a lot. You learn more lo- uh, about yourself and stuff like that. So we were just going through the phrases and like, you know, discovering ourselves. So basically it didn't work out too much in the end there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then basically my grades were at like an all-time low. Because uh, of the breakup? Mm, there's a lot of other factors <laughs> on top of that. Do you but want to talk about them? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Okay. Uh, but basically, um, it's it was a mix of relationship, a mix of um, not putting enough time into school, a mix of motivation, mm-hmm. uh, money, stuff like that. There's a lot of factors that right. culminated on top of uh, in terms of doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically, I was just at a low in my life, and then I'm I realized when I got into a co-op at uh, IBM. I was, was that second Ottawa. year for you? That was in second year. Okay. Second wow. year, yeah, I think it was like the 2B co-op, I think. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so then basically okay. I went to IBM for eight months in Ottawa, and then that's when I decided, I was like, this is where I change. This is where, like, I stepped foot in the gym before. Like, I went into, uh, what is it called, PAC? 
back in were you in did you go to pack uh in yeah, Waterloo? 20, before 20, before it was renovated yeah i think it was 2015 where it was the basement yeah it was, it was the like the best gym. experience i went there. i went downstairs it was very intimidating and i was, it was so intimidating yeah. oh my god you saw yeah, yeah. like it was not the kind of gym experience i expected yeah, that was the first all, time i went in right yeah and i think they were all like all the varsity teams were there mm-hmm. so they were um the volleyball team was super tall, 6'5". <laughs> Girls were 5'10 to 6 feet in volleyball as well. And then the football team, majority of them were over... They were still over 6 feet, but they were over 220 as well. Yeah. So, so they were like, like... They were a completely different yeah, and that was caliber like, of human beings like <laughs> compared to normal. So imagine me. I was like, okay, I used... When I was... Because I was doing work, uh, home workouts before, right? So yeah. then we had like... You know, twenty five pound dumbbell, but then you'd add a slack. A sl- oh, you you were doing that before? Yeah, a little bit. No, no, but it was like you know some shoulder presses, stuff like that. Oh, nice, okay. Uh, like pretty light. So then yeah. I'm I go over, I start doing some, and then yeah. it's just intimidating because you see in the background mirror, guys are like benching crazy amounts, and I'm like yeah. they're squatting a ton of weight, and you have no idea because you have no idea how much the plates are. So I'm like, oh my god, yeah. this is crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was intimidating. And but then, then you, I, you quit right away? I quit right you... away. Like, instantly, I le- I think that workout was, like, 20 minutes long. Yeah. And then I left. Yeah. Uh, but basically, that was, like, okay, I'm going to rediscover it. I'm going to head back. I'm going to look up, um, a, uh, like, programs. And then, essentially, I literally just typed in on Google, like, uh, bench squat deadlift. Like, just uh, lifting Did you programs. know about bench No, no I, not really. Deadlift, but it was or... more, like, or not, I didn't look up bench squat deadlift. Uh, that was wrong. But it basically was, like how to get stronger or stuff like that you know and then basically i think somewhere along the way you got into like strong lifts so five by five yeah and that's where you uh, got into it and i just went on i think did you discover that on reddit or where did you find it i think it was on google and then later down the line that's when i went on reddit and i found programs there yeah Yeah. i don't know how this was the case this is really interesting but it seemed like for a certain period of time i think maybe 2014 15 to 2018 19 strong lifts was the, the most recommended program it, or the program it, like it was top of the like google search and, reddit and it you, was so I, I know what the website looks like yeah. <laughs> you know, and they had an app too they had an app too a b a you knew how everything was laid out so what pr was going on with strong lifts was, man i remember maybe, maybe there was just a shift at that time but it was like literally five by five yeah. And then it's, you know, it's just basically add five pounds. If five can. pounds on bench mm-hmm. and, then and then 10, 10 pounds, pounds on, on. It was literally that. On deadlift um, as well. And then that's basically how it is. And then uh, went through. So how long did you run that for? I think like uh, basically those eight months. You ran strong lifts for eight months? Eight months until I went back to Waterloo. And then I realized that uh, working out in a company in like a tech gym um, is much different than working out in like back in the school how, gym because i was like oh i I'm, i finally started benching like one plate like 135 very is pretty impressive. good very it impressive. was pretty yeah. good and then i head over no, there and huge. they're like that's starting that's yeah. starting weight and i'm like oh okay yeah i got a lot of a lot a lot to go yeah yeah and then just i think it took me four off. or five years to bench a plate honestly. what yeah no way yeah because i was i i wanted to be skinny so bad oh. for my whole life that i remained really skinny but like it took me four or five years see so i know the grind i think i don't know if i said it to you but i said it to uh, basically every single time people uh ask me about the gym yeah. i'm yeah. like in the first two months because all i cared about was uh getting stronger yeah i didn't read up anything about how to properly do macros anything like that i knew i just need to eat so so you ate as so much as so every week for like two months uh do you know those i think you have a stack there there's like mcdonald's coupons yeah there's a two can dine yeah and i think back then it was like 10 bucks uh-huh. 11 bucks mm-hmm. so i buy the two can dine twice a week oh. when those coupons are in. <laughs> so what was your mentality was eat as much as mm-hmm. possible and get big yeah no matter then, what so and then imagine I can't, and then, yeah, it was literally that, and then in breakfast would be, like, five eggs, six eggs, and yeah. then, like, five pieces of bacon. Did you care about the amount of protein I you were know. getting? Or I didn't you were know like... anything about it. I just okay. knew I needed protein, yeah. and I needed calories. Got it. I didn't know about the ratios or anything like that. So what what was your uh, your squat and deadlift? It was not good. What was the progression? It was not good. Why not? Well, because <laughs> literally in those first, uh, like, eight months, like, I didn't know form or anything like that, right? 
And I think that's another thing where you're going, uh, uh, who's the, shoot, who's the, uh, there's a guy on YouTube who does, uh, who was like kind of OG in that time, like 2014, 2015, in terms of showing how to do lifts. He's like, uh, he's always shirts off, uh, he's like, uh, always has his shirt off. I think he has like an Australian accent or something. And maybe it's Australian. Oh, Scott Hermes? I think so. Yeah, Scott uh, Hermes. Yeah. yeah. Australian accent. Yeah. Because there's another guy who's like, um, uh, there was another guy who always had his shirt off and he was always like preaching like alpha strategies, but I don't think you're talking about him because he was big at that time too. No, no, no. But Scott Hermes was yeah. the one. Yeah. Wait, was that, are you talking about Athlean? No. No, not Athlean. Athlean is like skinny. Yeah, he's right? skinny. But was... This guy was like big. I forget what he was called, but he was like preaching like alpha strategies. He was doing a lot of like football CrossFit type stuff, I don't huge. Think I watched that guy. I watched a lot of. Stuff it was always Scott. in his garage. Scott and Herman. I, Scott Herman. I think Herman maybe? is the one you're talking. Yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, that's the guy. I was, so so he, basically, I watched a lot of him. Okay. But essentially, I didn't know how to translate that into real life. Okay. Right. So literally, was he that, telling you to squat to depth, or was he just I can't saying remember, until you feel it? I I don't know if I wa- even watched those because mm-hmm. literally, maybe I was just reading on the like online on how to squat. But basically, squat. I would squat. Maybe to depth in the beginning when it was like just the bar. And mind you, um, I don't know if I was on the Smith machine or not. But basically, there wasn't a Smith machine and there was also like a regular squat rack. Mm -hmm. uh, Dependent on which one was available at the time. And essentially, the squat rack, I'd get on and then I would go and it wasn't to depth. Not at all. Imagine I loaded that up to like, I thought I was strong. I was like 265. Very impressive. And then I'm squatting. In eight months? Within within those like yeah four to eight months, but the Very thing good. is, yeah. well, I was not squatting. Quarter though. squat. It was like quarter squat. If I see I'm that all the time in the gym, man. Yeah, even now, is. like, but it's, there's everyone's doing. Like, there's so many people who are uh, <laughs> who are putting on sh- uh, a bunch of weight and then quarter yeah, squat. But it's it. like yeah. it's either ignorant, like you don't know, yeah. you don't know better, yeah. or you're you actually have a like reason for it. Yeah. Of course, right? Like, uh, do you think people like have valid reasons for it? I'd like, I'd like to give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Because um, I've actually never heard of a valid reasoning for a quarter squat. I, like to, a legit quarter I'm squat. I'm trying to think if there's... Saw that like, yesterday. In terms of like... It was until here. Maybe some like power, like force output, maybe. I don't know. Like if you're trying to like... But that would require like, you know, you put the safeties up higher and then you like you go down until you hit it. And then yeah. you're like really trying to... I don't know. Maybe, if you're missing it by a little, a I completely little, get yeah. it. Yeah. But if you're if you're literally quarter squatting, then I'm like, always like twenty five percent of the uh, like if it's like yeah. halfway from like parallel to yeah yeah exactly I don't, I don't know maybe it's how about I, deadlift how was how did deadlift I didn't go really for you? do it too much actually oh. no actually maybe I didn't do it too much because one there wasn't too much space and two and uh, I was also afraid because I didn't know my, uh, about form because for me my so you skipped that in your five by five I think so okay. I think I, it was more squat and bench. Oh, because you were supposed to, 5x5, five five, you're only supposed to deadlift once a week. Yeah. And I think so it's I think something like one it. set of five. I think I So it didn't really did it. even yeah, matter. So maybe yeah. I did it, but essentially That's I was right. scared about it because I was like, oh, I don't know if my back's good and all that. And then... I were you said, military pressing? I, I know they maybe, have that 3x5 uh, in the program. And barbell rows. I think, I don't think I really did it too much. Maybe I did. I can't okay. remember. Okay. I just know my bench and I squat. I benched and squatted for sure. And I definitely shoulder pressed and some other stuff. So you come back to Waterloo, mm-hmm. you realize that, what did you realize? I realized that it wasn't as, um, it wasn't as impressive. Like for me, I like, cause like it, it's a different mindset now, but especially for a guy starting out, you're like, you think you're strong. You're, you think yeah. you're good. You like, you've improved a lot, but in reality, it's like in the greater scheme of things, it's, it's really all on you. Like it's on your personal measurement, but then once I saw how where everyone else was at, I was like, oh, I'm actually a lot farther than, away than where I thought I was. Did you have to and start over at all? No, not not start. No over. form like, wise, like oh. squat and deadlift. Did you have Even, to relearn the form or not? I, re- really? I think my squat and deadlift really was like a journey up until now. Literally, until maybe like half a year ago. No, not even half a year ago. Like since I started getting a coach, like uh, two mo- two months ago or a month and a half ago. That's when my form started. Like I knew about my form. Like it was pretty good up until then, but I wasn't sure about anything because hmm. it was like just guessing and stuff like that. And the first three years of lifting was literally me just trying to figure out how to like how to properly lift and just getting more efficient with it, right? Because 
it was good. Like everything else was pretty good, but there's always more I could have done. Now it's like, okay, I'm almost there. Yeah, I'm you get pretty it. close. It's like optimizing it, and right. now I know I'm pretty good, or I know what's wrong rather. I think well, that's you... the biggest distinction. I know what's wrong. Yeah. Back then, I didn't know what's wrong, so I thought it was right. 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 No, that that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So it... you can like you can do a a rep and immediately tell what mm. cues you missed or what like exactly. And yeah. back then, I just did what I thought was good and what I thought was right. So I. Just... It was fine. Were you ever one of those guys that actually missed like depth or like curved mm, your back when deadlifting? Like, no, not no. really. It was okay. more like, so you figured that part out yourself or yeah, you were like consistent. More, I just knew, I just yeah. knew it was wrong. Especially when you look at the, like the, how it feels, Yeah. especially like I know a little, uh, conventional deadlifts, deadlifts are a little more like lower back. Yeah. Like you're going to feel a lot more than sumo, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's like, it's like, you know, what numbers did you get to without a coach? Without a coach? Or like just recreationally? Recreationally, like, like just following uh, programs I found online and stuff like that. Uh, I think it was 415 squat, like Very 425 impressive. deadlift, and a 335 bench. On it is literally just because I bench a lot. Yeah. That's, big. that's, like, that's when I focused on the most. Wow. But now it's getting a lot better in terms of just like getting more confident in myself. Right. Uh, squat's getting there, but deadlift is the one that's bo- like booming up. So what hopefully- do you like now? Uh, like not, I didn't beat my PR, but basically the highest I've done for singles were like, I did like 385 for a single, 395 for a single, 405 for a single, 415 for a single, 425 for Is there a reason why you're going so, uh, your coach is making you No, it's because it's all still RPE 7, right? Okay, got it. Yeah, Um, that's fair. Do I have to explain? Uh, Can I explain? For, actually do it, yeah. (laughs) So basically, RPE is like, um, essentially just a measurement of what you... Uh, what is it called? Rate of rate perceived of perceived exertion. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, it's a scale from one to ten, but most people use only really like six to ten. Um, essentially, it's how you gauge how many reps you have left. So if it's a ten, that means you couldn't do another rep. If it's a nine, you could have only done one more rep. Eight, two more reps. Seven, and uh, three more reps, and so on. So that's how you can gauge exactly how tough your workout should be. Right. So let's say. Um, I was supposed to do three reps of, or let's make it simple, one rep at seven. So then I'd find a weight where I can do one rep with three reps in the tank. Right. And essentially, in when you're programming, you want to stay around RPE 7, 7.5, because right. that'll let you just continue on and just uh, in terms of recovery and all that. Right? When did you so, get with a coach? Like a month and a half ago. Okay. So yeah. you you're are you planning on doing RP seven for well it's the next whatever you month program then? right okay. so it's like first month was like first block blocks are like yeah uh, in programming where you're trying to uh, fix us uh, like do particular lifts in that point um, so in this block it was mainly focused on I think it was volume and like trying to acclimate myself does he usually do three month blocks uh yeah i think it's like four to six weeks usually okay and All then right. it's a deload so i'm deloading right now oh, which nice. is nice okay. um but basically yeah it was just acclimating and then now it's now we're starting to get to know my numbers so now we can start focusing on whatever my weaknesses are yeah yeah so it's good it's that's nice. exciting yeah. um we, we'll come back to this because oh, i yeah, love talking yeah, about we've this been going for a little but bit let's, well, but we, let's, can, we let's, can talk about the gym uh, forever yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's uh let's let's take it all the way back so You were born in the Philippines? Yes. Are you older than your brother or younger? Yeah, I'm the oldest. You're the oldest. Yeah, and then we've all I also have a sister, a younger sister. So is it you, Jonathan, and then your younger sister? Uh, me, John. You're thinking Uh, John. John, yeah. I always thought his name was Jonathan No, it's John. Okay, just John. Yeah, it's just John. And then uh, my sister who's uh, Carol. Carol? And Carol is the youngest? She's the youngest. Yeah. And what how old is she? She's twenty turning twenty one this year. Yeah. So she's six years younger. Yeah, she's in uni. Where My is brother's she at? two years younger, and then I'm. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, she's at Western. Oh, nice. Yeah. For what? Uh, I think it's health science, something along those lines. Okay. I'm pretty nice. bad. For so, so all three of you born are uh, are born <laughs> no, in the no, Philippines. No, no, no. My brother and I were born in the Philippines. She was born here. Got it. Yeah. And then what? Uh, how was life like in the Philippines? I actually I don't, don't know a lot of. I do none? not remember. When did like, you come? Uh, when I was like three or four. Oh, yeah, so super like, young. He then. was super young, so that's why I was like. Okay. But the thing is, and he was two young. then. He yeah, was one so or then two. that's where like. But the thing yeah. is, I knew a lot of like Tagalog back then. Yeah. Um, but 
it was all lost within the first two years. So like, I can understand. Don't your parents speak. speak it to you? They do, but I can. I but can you understand. don't respond. I speak in English. Okay. Yeah. Why? Why did they move here? Like uh, it was just a better opportunities. Uh, it's, what it's, do they do? Uh, my mom was in accounting, okay. and my dad's. He's like. He's essentially one of those guys who's like he worked uh, really hard to get his uh, siblings up, uh, get them through school and stuff like that. So he didn't he himself didn't finish school. Okay. Um, but basically, he's like pretty much as close to like an engineer without being an engineer. Does he run his own practice then? No, he works at Telus. Oh, nice. Okay, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's very cool. So yeah, he's like a RF specialist or something along those lines. Very impressive. Yeah. So that, I heard that's very lucrative. When I was looking at when when I was uh, in Waterloo and I was like thinking about stuff to do, I remember coming upon that, and they oh. like they paid they pay really well yeah, for were, yeah it's pretty yeah, good. Like, so it's, essentially it's yeah, he's been working there for like twenty years. No, no, not twenty years, like ten years, fifteen years. Uh, was that the job? No, was that the first job he got when he came to Canada? No, no, he was okay. working. It was like a series of progressions up to there. I forgot what, but always in RF? They were, but it was always in like uh yeah like the. Like the telecom field. Yeah, yeah. By the way, it's oh. gonna get. I'll get I'll, maybe in a little bit. <laughs> okay. In the telecom field. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So they, uh, when they came here, did they have to do odd jobs, or did they? Did your mom find work in accounting right uh, away? So basically, my dad, dad moved here first, okay. and then he found the job, and then he got it. He got it settled, got the apartment, and then we moved, and then everything was settled. Like afterwards. a year in between, kind of thing. My yeah, dad. Yeah, he he same. was he was here. I think for a year. And then we moved over. But you don't, re- you have no recollection have of him being no on. No memory of it. No oh, idea. Wow. I do not remember. All I know is that apartment that we first moved into, and then my sister was born, and then where was, was like, the apartment? Uh, it was in Scarborough, and then we had. Wow. I remember specifically there was a moment back then where it was nine eleven, and then I was literally. Oh, I came. You were home. here. Yeah, I was here. I came wow. home. I came home from school. And my mom's literally like freaking out on the TV and I'm just watching it. I'm like, whoa. And She's freaking out because of what's happening? Or yeah, what's what, happening. did she have anyone close I, I to I don't her? think so. I don't think so. But it was just like, you know, it's like, yeah. it's crazy because you're just watching it all unfold. And my dad that, was close by. He was? Yeah. So our, my story was that my dad goes uh, to, do you know Continental Airlines, which eventually mm-hmm. became United? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my dad goes, um, he works at Emirates back home goes to continental training and um the the place where they're training at is across the water from the 9-11 trade centers and so 9-11 happens all his communication gets cut off the building's completely down my mom and my grandma and everyone's are watching at home seeing the the towers fall Mm -hmm. and all they know is my dad is close by that's they don't crazy. understand it, but they know he's close That's by, crazy. and they can't call him. So they're all freaking out like no tomorrow. And then like a few, you know, a few days later, it's like, oh yeah, this happened. But like, luckily, it didn't impact Not, yeah, us. But he impacted. saw it. Mm-hmm. He saw the whole. So I can't imagine of, how that. Yeah. Like that's yeah. like a, two levels up from yeah. the experience, yeah. you know? Because like yeah. this is like we may have family in America, yeah, right? But then this is like he was literally there. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, he was talking about it recently, where he's like, "I talk about uh, I talk about the tech recession, mm-hmm. and sometimes he gets like really upset because he's like, when I came, I basically went through the worst recession of my life because mm-hmm. there were no uh, airline jobs at all mm-hmm. once that incident happened, and he had to work in a factory. He's like, you shouldn't really be be making excuses. But it's interesting how we came upon that. Yeah, it's just different situations there, right? So my dad came here with a few other friends. Yeah. Because they were all like with their families, but they all came here to like be the pioneers. Same time. Same time. And they all came at the same time. And I I don't know if they all lived together, Hmm. but basically that's like they all tried to find jobs and stuff like that. And then they all brought their families over. And then that's the rest of it. Do you remember Scarborough? A little bit. A little bit. Was it, was it? So I didn't know a lot about Scarborough until recently. Mm-hmm. Um, was there a huge like Indian, Sri Lankan population at that time as well? I can't remember. There might have been. Yeah. It's just that I only know select people that I interacted with back then. Right. But I. How can't long remember. did you stay? Um, I think until I was like eight years old. Okay. So maybe like four or five years later, okay. and then after that, actually no no no. So what's what's <coughs> what's four years old five years old that's basically like jk right 
Yeah. So JK up until grade four. So what is that? Like six years? Yeah. So like six years, and then we moved here. And Do you then... remember the food and stuff, or not really? No. 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 I just remember um, just small interactions, a little bit about the neighborhood, stuff like that. Not too much about school and stuff like that. If I'm being honest. I How just... were the interactions? It was more. I don't know. It was like, especially with like a family that's like a lot more reserved and a lot more like, you know, they're very protective of their children. I remember there's one, um, what's it called? Birthday party that uh, I was invited to. And I was so scared that my parents wouldn't let me go. So I didn't even like, like I knew like as a kid, I knew I wouldn't have gotten like, I wouldn't have been able to go. So I didn't even ask them. What's the reason? I am. It's just essentially, they're just very like, um, protective in that regard your parents are conservative mm-hmm. in that regard yeah so or i don't even know maybe they uh, but essentially they'd rather everything happen at our place so like for friends like outside of school like they're like no no that's no, not happening sort of deal um so did they ever explain why mm, i just know it's it's just them like even through the years i just know that they're just very like shielded shielded protected. and more like um a little like it took them forever for my like first best friend and when i moved to oakville it took them forever to convince them to let me sleep over at his house wow. right oh recently uh no no, no. it was more oh. like this was back in like okay. grade six grade yeah. seven but it okay. took them quite a while like he had to come over and his parents had to like convince them that it was gonna be okay yeah sort of deal right yeah. so imagine me as like grade two grade three and then i like i wasn't there at the party and they're like hey why weren't you at the party right and then i was like oh um my parents yeah. couldn't let me. Yeah, so I just had to, like, just give a That's reason. That's traumatizing. You know? Yeah, but it was, it's okay. I got over it, you know? Right. Um, but it's little things like that. Um, but basically, that was it. And then, I, after, other than that, I don't really remember Scarborough that much. I remember the path I walked from, like, home to school. But outside yeah, of that. you did it every day. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember That's that, nuts. but I don't remember anything else. Have you ever gone back and revisited the path at all or no. it's just imprinted in your no, memory right now? i have not because i don't really remember the area right i don't really remember the area i know i know because we visited it like two years ago like in the, our surrounding area yeah. but i don't really it's give me around, give me one second I'm yeah just... no worries oh is it tilting down yeah the weight of it yeah cool yeah so, so basically oh, yeah. it was at scarborough near scarborough gen Okay. Scarborough General Hospital. Got it. Yeah, and around that area. Is that the only hospital in Scarborough? I have no idea. Okay. I, I don't Because I just, I recently discovered that, well, this is dumb me, but <laughs> Brampton, I guess the only hospital in Brampton is Brampton Civic. Is that true? I don't, I don't know. I don't know anything about Brampton. Anyways, yeah. Literally, I don't know much about the suburbs around. Oh, okay. Okay. That's so nice. basically, yeah, and then after that, we moved to Oakville. And then literally. Oh, wow. And then literally after that, I've literally been in Oakville since, I don't know. What is that? Oh, eight? You moved to Oakville in 08? 08, 07? Somewhere okay. around there. Okay. Yeah. Literally, and I've been there. I've been here. Since. Has has Oakville, even back then, was it considered uh, very affluent? Yeah. Or is that a recent development that... I think it's always been. Because, like, the thing is, yeah. like, mind you, the area I lived in, like, people called it the Heights. You know? And you can imagine what... Like, like the Heights means. means, like, Mississauga Road. Or, uh, like... Uh, like uh, bridal path like that type of no I think Heights as in like like kind of like a higher like a more like richer neighborhood but we were not we were not like uh, yeah so that's like, what that's what class, have you so. ever gone through Mississauga Road it's the same a little thing bit, yeah. yeah Mississauga Road and like bridal mm-hmm, path mm-hmm. which is in Toronto I guess where Drake yeah. lives like those they're exceptional houses. it wasn't exceptional but it's like yeah it's the rich. But, it's the rich part of Oakville. But back then, it was all oh, like they called it because it was also I don't know the reasoning why, but that that's what I assumed it was. Were but your parents like, really affluent at that? No, point? we were like pretty much middle class. Okay. Yeah. How did they decide Oakville? I have no idea. I okay. literally have no idea. I think they just found whatever was like a nice neighborhood stuff like that and close to a, a school. Was like, oh. the was the house price really high because you were living in the Heights? No, it was actually not that bad back then. Okay. I can't remember. I think from what I remember, I think it was like 300, 300 or 400 K. Very impressive. Yeah. It's not, it's not that bad. Very 2008, right? 2008. Yeah. 2008, 2009. I think I don't yeah. think it was that bad. Actually, maybe, maybe that was after the dip because 2008 recession 
house prices definitely fell. Mm -hmm. They might have caught it at the right time. Maybe. I have no clue. Yeah. Um, but basically, Is it a very nice house? No, it was okay. No, no. It was like a townhouse. But are the, are the the heights, like are all the houses around you custom built? No. Okay. I honestly, I don't, I'm not too good with terminology in that regard. Custom built is uh, when you tear a house down and then you build it from the ground up. So every house in that neighborhood looks different. Oh, no, no, no. It looks different. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but we so were on like a custom. crescent. We were on like a crescent. So it was like uh, little smaller houses and all that. Okay, got it. No, but no. the houses around you are, are all like built from... Yeah, they're yeah, all different. Exactly. Did you build your house from scratch as well or never? No, okay. no. no got no. it. It was, it was pre-existing. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. you guys have like... It was big enough that... It must be tough actually. Three kids. That means like if you guys want to have your own room, you're looking at a five bedroom or yeah. four bedroom house minimum. So essentially right? back then, <clears throat> essentially my brother and I shared a room. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then my sister had her own room. Okay. Yeah, but basically it was like that. Yeah. And then what well, you still live there, right? No, we moved houses. We moved. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. In Oakville again? Yes. Moved houses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. What well, loved Oakville that much? Mm, yeah. Well, I think they just got you like used to it. You know? So yeah, they just like it's just where we were. And also my sister was still in school at the time and she was like just like in grade 11, grade 12. So when we moved, she, they didn't want her to yeah. um Remain the, at the same yeah, high school. They didn't want her to like, they want her experience in high school to be fine. Uh, so that's why we also stayed. When did you realize that Oakville was affluent? Uh, really, pretty early on. It's literally just because, especially um, the school I was at is very white. Um, it's, I think I was like, what's the school called? Uh, St. Luke's. Okay. And literally it was like, Oh no! Maybe it's, it's uh, funny we how that works. Very much eh? the minority. Very, yeah. very. It's much. funny how that works. Uh, I went to Port Credit. Yeah, I yeah. don't know if you uh, you know. I know the called. area. Yeah. Yeah. So my my school was predominantly white as well. Yeah. And it was very affluent. Yeah. For some reason, <laughs> there's a correlation <laughs> I, between I'm between. Not, I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not gonna say, it, but it was like yeah. Yeah, it, was it was pretty much really, that, right? Yeah. So then, um, you just knew early on, especially just like in terms of where people live, like where your friends live in their houses and stuff like that. You just knew. Like they lived in the heights, or even yeah, better lived, than like the they, like they like we lived in the smaller houses there, but there was like much bigger houses that were nicer around the area. Like uh, right? four or five thousand square feet. I have no idea. Yeah, but like feet. they they, were big, they yeah. looked nice. like a little bigger. Yeah, yeah so yeah. they were nice. So I was like, okay, and we knew it was already Oakville on top of that, right? Was this a public school or no? It's a Catholic school. Catholic school. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Continue. Um, and then essentially, yeah, was there for a little bit. Uh, met some friends, and then we went to the feeder school. Um, which was like a Catholic high school, and that was St. Thomas Aquinas down in a feeder school to Waterloo. Uh, feeder no, uh, so St. Luke's was a feeder school for uh, St. Tom uh, STA St. Thomas Aquinas, which is around Rebecca and mm -hmm. not Third Line. What is it? Um, man, I'm really bad with uh, locations with geography. Um, okay. But basically, it's around Rebecca, uh, around there. Mm -hmm. um, but basically. Um, that's where it was, and then that's where uh, you know, a lot more just growing up happened. So, elementary school, I didn't really remember. It was okay. It was just an average uh, time. Like you, you got to know, you got to yeah. know again, meet some friends. But it's more like just developing myself. That's when I realized I was a lot more of like more studious. Like I knew I was studious and stuff like that. But it was just more like naturally smart, I guess. Like I was in like, elementary. Like, yeah, like my parents were didn't really do too much hand holding in terms of like putting me through Kumon or like they didn't do that. Literally, all my mom did was have me. Uh, she wrote down the multiplication tables on a, like a sheet of paper, folded it up, and just told me uh, mem memorize this, and that was it. And you were able to do it. And I was able to do it. And then literally, I don't know if that was the one thing that like got me through elementary and high school, and that like just pushed me just above the curve, you know, in terms of like the like intelligence or knowledge there so i was always just good at like math and science essentially. but were you when you got to high school were you working hard for it or there was no there I, was minimum amount of work just natural it was, ability i would so i remember that i would do all of my homework in class because okay. i did not want to do any work at home because i wanted okay. to just play video games okay so it was just natural talent where uh mm -hmm. so, so I, even I, through high school 
high school, I still I did more work at home, okay. but I tried to do as much as I could in class because literally I just wanted to go home and game. So that was my prim- primary motivation. Were you top of your class in school? I was almost yeah. like in elementary school and then in high school, that's when you started tapering off. So I was like number one, number two in terms of like math and stuff like that. In the was the school. other person trying a lot harder than I you? I can't remember. The number one, number two? I have no, no. idea. Were you competitive in any way no, or not really? Not really. Okay. A little bit, but not really. Like you can imagine like it probably transitions as well when you go into gaming. I'm not as super competitive when it comes to gaming. I was just, it was just like good at it, you know. Mm-hmm. So then, I was just good at school. So I wasn't really competitive. It was just more, what I was just doing. And your mom and dad never pushed. Oh, you for they anything? pushed me hard. Oh, they did. In terms of in okay. terms of like bad grades, because I was not good at French. So I remember uh, whenever I'd get a bad grade in French, I would go to my dad, and then I'd ask him to sign it. And then he'd tell me no, and then I'm gonna show it to your mom, and then he shows it to my mom, and then I get roasted. Did you ever get physically oh, beat yeah. or anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah, did? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was all that. Like, so, what was there's, like, there's, were like, they slapping you, or uh, what was Yeah, yeah. there's like one instance with the belt, stuff like that. Oh, okay. Um, so, she was, yeah. And then there's was also, like, I was like, you know, like typical stuff, you know, locked in the basement. You know, oh, locked in the basement? Locked in the basement for a little bit. Um, okay. Was there uh, a lot of was, crying and yelling when you were locked in the basement? Were no, you young or not really? I was. It was like early, like late elementary, early high school sort of deal. Oh, because you don't have actually no, no, with no, no, no. It was, elementary, it was all elementary school, mind you. Actually, okay. it was all elementary school, high school. Not, nothing really okay. happened. So twelve, thirteen, kind of. Thing. Yeah, twelve, thirteen. Okay, you know, so yeah, you're not crying there, that so much. That, at yeah, that so point, basically, yeah. I'm just sitting there and just like waiting it out. I'm like, well, yeah. You know, what what can I do? I'm just gonna chill here. Right. And then uh, there's all this stuff like, oh, you gotta just stand on the wall, face the wall. We're just gonna eat dinner. And I'm like, okay, right. But like now I say it now and it's like you're so desensitized yeah. and like it's already done and so you can like laugh at it. Right. But at the same time, like at the moment it's like, well, this is kinda it's kinda messed up. It is, yeah. Did your did your brother and sister go through not as similar much. experience? Not as much. Why not? Because uh, my parents were like very doting. What does me. doting mean? I think it's like um like they really push you hard. Like they they really like wanna support you, but they're like really like they think you're their number one. Are, were you more academically inclined than your brother and sister? Yeah, you are. But it was, but it was also like significantly more academically inclined. I wouldn't say significantly more? more, but like for by a pretty good margin. Yeah. Like more, I'd say my sister is a lot better now. Yeah. She's much more traditionally like academic, like studious. That's the best word. She's studious. She's yeah. studious now. But you had a now. natural inclination that your parents picked up, and they were like, "Yeah, and we're then, gonna." Like, folk, I, I yeah. didn't really study that much or anything like that, right? Yeah. So. It was more just like, oh yeah, it's just no. It's uh like I'm not a parent, obviously, but it's it's wizardly when when your parent sees that. Like my mom saw that in me, uh, young, and she was like, "I'm gonna make this." And my my parents were like, my mom was a helicopter mom, so maybe yeah. like way worse than you. But she was like, "I'm gonna. This is the one I'm gonna make. <laughs> I'm this gonna. This is the one that's gonna succeed. This is the one that's <laughs> gonna succeed." <laughs> Because so, she tried with, like, my cousins and stuff, and yeah. they did well. But, like, she was like, this one I can... Yeah, this, this one, one I can I bold. Can, this I can, one I can, I can do bold. something here. Yeah. yeah so. And I didn't have... Like, I don't have siblings, but, like, if you were the one that was, like, out... Out... Uh, averaging them uh, academically, they would really, like... Yeah, you would be held to a different standard mm, than them. Yeah, so basically, I think there was very much that where yeah. I was held to a different standard, and they knew they're, like, well, we shouldn't expect as much... So we're not going to care as much, yeah. you know, in the beginning they did, but then once they realized that was the consistency that they were going to get with my siblings, they're like, okay, we got to readjust our expectations. Yeah. Cause they were all probably always in like the eighties or whatever. And you uh, were always in the nineties right? or seventies, yeah, whatever. Yeah. For, yeah. But yeah. it was like, yeah, yeah, it was always like that. Yeah. No right? matter so what like, they did. It's the yeah. typical Asian meme where it's like 90, yeah. why not 95 or like 99, why not 100, you yeah. know, yeah. it's like literally I've been told that. Yeah, and I, and was that was that a positive for you? It was. It was more like, are you serious? This is crazy. Like this is already hot. Like, but didn't you need high. that to get into nano? Mm, I well, it was more. Yeah, but it was more like that. Well, that was more um, elementary school and high school. It was more consistent. Like I think my parents didn't really realize when it come came to high school how grades or anything like that or the university or college system worked. They just knew they wanted to get me through school. Mm-hmm. They didn't know anything about 
high uh, university or college or any of the sorts. So when I told them that I wanted to go to the University of Waterloo for engineering, they're like, that's great. That's Where's great. that? Yeah. What is that? Oh, wow. Okay. Where, where is that? What is that? Okay. Wow. And they didn't know anything about the cost or anything like that. So they didn't really prepare mm. too much, right? So that you can imagine how that starts going into the financial side that I was like saying a little bit earlier, right? So basically that's what happened. And essentially as you go, uh, when I went from elementary school to high school, that's when I started really like, you know, I'm good at math and science. I'm still like a pretty like nerdy kid. I didn't really talk too much. Like if you see anyone from my high school or like people I talked to in terms of my friend group, they knew like I talked a lot. But in terms of if you ask like other people, they're like, oh, he's probably a little quieter or stuff like that. He's, um, you know, he's talking with this friend group, but he's like not as outgoing as I am now. Mm-hmm. And mind you, I was also like, I'm still and still am very introverted. Right. But it's more like... Um, after like after this i'm just gonna like chill and play games or something like that sort right. of deal right right um but in terms of myself i like talking like in terms like i like to socially drain my battery right right and then i'll recover it later but um, back then you weren't really doing yeah that. it was back then it was also like well you weren't doing it with random people not random people it was yeah. more like That's scared of myself you know like uh, like uh I didn't know myself. Like I didn't. I wasn't confident in myself and my ability. Do you remember what? Like that. What was the insecurity? Do you remember what the insecurity was? <sighs> was there bullying? Was there? No, I think it was more. It it had to do with like the minority thing, right? Because imagine being a high school yeah. kid. No, being, I like, get it. I being get Asian it, yeah. and then like you're ninety percent. Really into like you're you're well not really that, but it was more like uh, the gaming, um, anime, really into that. Um, and then like not really many other people were really into it or mm-hmm. knew about it so then it, you just felt like a little bit like an outcast kind of deal and or ever, ever, or the people that were into it were a little more closeted about it you know so I did go to like Anime North I'm lucky that my uh, friend group back then were interested in that right. or at least they were willing to like extend a little bit in terms of you know maybe we should watch uh, that anime and stuff like that and then oh that does sound cool going to like uh, anime north going to a con- uh, conventions that sort of deal so it was really cool what anime were you um, watching back then? what do you mean like what i was watching back then In back then school. it was like sword art online okay if you're, do you know that no no but basically it was like a really popular one back then okay it's not it's it's like it, probably, it, it more popular than naruto no, 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 no. Yeah. but it was more like yeah, but it, that was like one of the big ones back then. But it was like when you're interested in that and you can't really talk too much about it, right? It's like kind of hinders in yourself and you can't really talk about gaming and stuff like that, right? Um, my girlfriend at the time, she was okay in terms of like if uh, in terms was she of like into respecting gaming the boundaries, as, was in she into like gaming and anime? No. What was Not she really. into? A little bit more into like slightly into anime. Okay. Right. Uh, but was she was, Filipino too, or was no, she a she different? Was Irish. She was Irish. Okay. Mm. And how'd you guys meet? Like, what was the? No, no but what was, was the commonality? Group. Oh, friend group. Okay. Friend group. Okay. Right. Um, but basically, there's that, and then, yeah, it was. But it was also like there was one real key experience that like changed myself as a whole. Was like uh, I took a drama class in grade ten, and essentially the t- uh, the teacher back then he was amazing. He was like very energetic, very outgoing, and essentially, I took—I don't remember why I took that class, um, but I don't know if I apply, uh, if I auditioned for the school play before that. But I think mm-hmm. it was afterwards, after I took the drama class, because I think we needed an arts credit, and I knew I wanted to take. And you and needed I think drama, grade ten, and I, I did not it. want to take arts because yeah. I'm not artistically minded at all. Right. So I was like, I'll, I'll do drama. Right. And basically that's when he like opened up a little bit and then I was like, oh, hey, this is actually really fun. Like in like be uh, expressing myself. Right. So that's essentially it. I just expressed myself. It was fun. Um, and then, well, and then he told me, and I think he pushed me to audition for the play. I got a decent part. I had fun. Like we're getting Which to Which play people. was it? Um, I think back then it was, he bought a, playbook called like the count of monte cristo mm-hmm. high so yeah. it was like a high school version of it right, yeah it was really cool um really fun um and basically yeah it was really and, and then i went into drama again the year afterwards and it was really cool um but I you're saying that there. opened you up like were you able to make friends with strangers after mm, going to drama with, or? well a little bit more well you felt more comfortable a with yourself bit, and that yeah, was like exactly the that the latter i was a lot more comfortable with myself in, in, you accepted yourself more it was more of just being able to express like being able to talk more 
right. stuff like that, right? right? So that was a little bit more there. But then, uh, unfortunately, um, the teacher passed away. Um, during he, high school? During high school, while we, we were taking wow. his class. But do you know how? Uh, he just passed away in his sleep. Oh. I'm he so wasn't sorry. that old. Okay. He was maybe like early 50s, mid 50s. Wow. So it was really sad. That yeah. was really, really sad. Um, right. But basically... Um, yeah, that was that was a tough moment, and then it was he, we were going to do like a um, tribute. No, not yeah. a tribute. Like be, before he passed away, we were planning on doing like a uh, I forgot what uh, the word. It's not. It's escaping me. But they basically were going to do an event for the first time, and he was always been wanting to do it. Right. And it was we were all super excited. We were pumped, and then the next, and then we found out he passed away. And then literally like a week later, we found out he ordered shirts for everyone for that oh, event. Wow. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. So it was really sad in that regard. But regardless, it was, and he, he ordered it secretly. Like he, I think he guessed everyone's sizes or something like that. But it was really, it was really sweet. But um, that really taught me in terms of like, not, like I think that was my first significant death um, yeah. at that time. But also my grandma passed away at that time, but she moved back to the Philippines. So I kind of lost that connection there, but it's you weren't somewhere. close with your grandma, not as because, much. Okay. So this was like, well, I was close when I was younger, okay. but not anymore because she did um, move. Uh, yeah, she didn't. You didn't grow up with her, right? It, well, I did grow up with her. I did. Okay. Uh, for quite when a few years. When did she move back? I think she moved back. How think, old were you? Maybe 10, 11 oh. She moved back, and then Young, basically, yeah. yeah, she was gone. And then it was until like five years later, four years later. I'm so, so sorry. It was, it's okay. It happens, right? right. It's literally life. Um, but basically, that was the most, like, someone close to me that I knew. Yeah. Uh, in terms he of was a big method. influence on you. Right. And, like, so, you looked up to him in a lot of ways, right? Yeah. So then that changed things. And then basically, I, the rest of high school was just going through the motions. And then I realized that, hey, I need to, like, most of my friends are going to university. And I knew in grade nine, I wanted to go to Waterloo because I talked to a prefect What's a prefect? Um, it's basically like, you know how student council is like a little more um, student cho- uh, student voted body. This is more like a teacher voted body in terms of in the, uh, students that'll like take care of some events at school. So um, uh, there's a prefect back then who was like doing the tours of uh, the high school I was at, and basically, yeah, she was good. She was, uh, and she's like, yeah, I'm going to Waterloo for like a grade or something. Okay. And then I was in grade nine. I'm like, cool, Waterloo. I'm a, I'm a good. Look, did you, uh, did you look into that. it? No, not at all. So you just wanted to go to University of Waterloo because you saw this precept go to Waterloo? Yep. That's it. And then I realized, and then I heard that they were like the number one or number two uni- uh, engineering school. So I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, it works out. Okay. And then I remember uh, going, it was good, uh, or not going. Uh, I remember um applications were really hard i think i got accepted in the last wave yeah that was crazy like we were all in i remember I, we all wait so you tell your parents do they look up the average the entrance average no, they didn't for... look at anything they don't know nothing anything about that okay. they just knew it was like number one so you one. you were just getting like 90s without like any like yeah. well you had a goal for yourself I that goal, you wanted to I get knew, waterloo I to go to school, but yeah. it wasn't like I but your parents like, weren't telling you no I, no, no i didn't that, i didn't like set myself to like Okay. In this test, I need to get 100 so I can go to Waterloo. Oh, wow. It was more like, well, these are my grades. I'm just going to wow. try to apply. And then basically, I applied to McMaster because I knew the average minimum was like an 80. I was like, I'm going to get in. Mm-hmm. Queens, it was like around an 80 because I, I can get in. And then I applied to Waterloo. And I'm like, why Nano? Well, it's because I was like, well, I have no idea what I do. Uh, honestly, it was more like, well... I really want to get into the future. Like the future sounds really cool in terms of it's like the forefront of technology. Yeah. I didn't really do too much research in terms of what the courses were, what they did or anything like that. I just knew I really liked the idea of it. Right. And then, but at the time I didn't know anything about biology. I hated biology. That's my worst. Like I knew nothing literally. So imagine me going to university later down the line and having to take a biotech course. Now you had or to take biochem, a bio- biochem, biochem course. I got it. Destroyed, yeah. yeah, absolutely destroyed. Okay, uh, university was a wake up call. Okay, um, but basically, like you can't just get by it, at my level with just natural smarts. You could not. So that's that's the wake up. Yeah. That's the wake up call there. Yeah. Um, so then that's uh, so high school I could get by, and I was able like yeah. it dropped down from like grade nine and ten from high nineties to like right. mid nineties in eleven and twelve, and that was that was enough to push me through. Was it? 
it was enough to push me through the okay. Waterloo. Because uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you my experience. So I'm in grade twelve, and um, I want to get into Waterloo Engineering, mm-hmm. Nano actually. And uh, the first semester comes around, I take chem and I talk to my chem teacher, and I'm like, I really want to get into Nano, and she's like, I don't think it's cut out for you. I don't think like it's really hard. It's not cut out for you, right? And um, so she made me feel like my 92, 93 average was not good enough for nanotech. It was amazing. It was the best thing I've ever like experienced because that pushed me to like beast the second semester. But I remember feeling like this 93 is not going to get me into nano. So it was something similar to that. Yeah. Like I do remember now yeah. where my girlfriend at the time and my parents were like, they began realizing and they're like, because I was, we were waiting on acceptances, right? Yeah. And I was not getting anything at all. I think it was first like, semester. Uh, this was second semester. Oh, okay. So imagine like this is the actual wave. Did you have to like? Did you have to uh, escalate in second semester? Mm, your your marks? not really. It was more I just like to. it was more just waiting on the grades. Got it. Yeah. Um. So basically, I was just waiting on the grades, and I was like, oh no, like I'm I haven't gotten any. Were you low nineties in first and second semester? No, in. Second sem- and first semester, I was like mid nineties, mid to okay. high. What's mid ninety five? Yeah, I'm like ninety five. Like I remember, I got like in my functions class, I got a ninety nine. Okay, yeah, yeah, stuff like yeah. that. So that yeah. bumped it up a decent okay. bit, right? Got it. Um, but basically, it was like going through there. So I knew I just needed to maintain like low nineties in my second sem. Got it. So that's what I was trying to maintain. Got it. Oh, mine, mine was brought down because my my advanced functions was a ninety nine, but. Mm-hmm. English was a ninety. Oh, yeah, and, I think my and English chemistry. Was there. Chemistry, she gave me a ninety-two. So I brought I think, it down I think, to ninety-two. I, dude, I think those were similar grades that yeah, I got. So, I think those were the exact same grades so, I got. So that's why it came out to be oh, a ninety-two point five. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah. In I remember in calculus. Oh man, you that had was calculus in, in first second, semester, second, second, second. Yeah. So that's so that was like the midterm grades that were sent. Yeah. So I was like, try, I remember I tried pretty hard, not yeah. pretty hard, but like. Yeah. I wanted to get higher, like mid nineties in calculus, and then yeah. after I got the exam, I just dumped. Yeah, I just went straight down. Yeah, and then Me that's too. when I finished the course with like a ninety, and I'm like, yeah, I'm fine with this. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. But yeah, I remember her saying that in first semester, and that like I was like, screw this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beast it. And then second second semester, physics comes around, calculus comes around, computer engineering and computer science comes around beasted that okay. to like yeah like it was it was a crazy difference okay. and then like and then and then my mom i remember it was betty betty was also leading do you know betty right sanjeev betty he was for some reason taking care of both nano and tron at that point Actually, and I don't so know the you don't know betty no. okay he's like the dean he was the dean of mechatronics oh, okay. for a while okay. but um i remember distinctly my mom's like you're clearly better at physics than you are at chemistry Mm-hmm. So why are you going into nanotech in the first place? And that was the, I changed the last minute. Yeah, see, that's where I didn't realize that. I didn't yeah. notice that. Because I, I literally didn't know. I was like, yeah. I'm just... Weren't you better me. at physics too? Yeah, I was better at physics. Significantly, right? Yeah. Yeah. But that's the, uh, that's the other thing. Like, I didn't know. Like, literally, if you're asking an 18-year-old guy, a kid... But how'd you... Put, oh, nano because forefront of technology. Yeah, exactly. And then I was sounds like, sounds cool. cool. So I was like, oh, that's a perfect combination, you know? Yeah. So I did it, and then I'm like, okay, well, once you're, um, once you're actually in it, it's a lot different. Yeah. Like, the level of... And I didn't do uh, AP or IB or anything like that. Okay. So yeah. imagine me going to Calc Level 1, and I'm like, holy, this is hard. But everyone had to do Calc everyone, Level Yeah, everyone. Okay. And then I was like... But okay, yeah, that was a wake-up call. That was a wake-up call. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. the first little bit was easy. I was like, okay, yeah. this is not bad. First, yeah. first month, and then after, I was like, oh, it's time to get a little... Yeah, and then I remember literally first. Uh, what's it called? First exam was mm. math one seventeen. Yeah, yeah, and then I walk in. I get, and then I fl- go to the first page. Were you ready for it though? Did you feel like you were ready or no? no? There's a story before that too. Okay. So basically. Um, concerning the relationship I was in then okay. um, essentially we had an ar- uh, argument over something super stupid um, it's tough yeah, yeah over something super stupid and the exam was at 9am and I was up until 4am like just arguing with her and I'm sorry yeah so that was really bad and then imagine yeah. me going to the exam no flipped one's... to the first page yeah. not didn't know anything flipped to the second page didn't know anything yeah. flipped to the third page 
look down at the bottom of the third page and that's when I knew how to do that problem. Right. And I'm like, You're oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. I, this is where I need to calculate what grade I need to pass this course. Did you do it doing that? Doing mm-hmm. that exam? Maybe I think I did. And then afterwards, after I left, I went to uh, Did you break up with her that day? Still, no, the year after. Okay. It took a year after. Uh, but basically, after that exam, I remember I went to um, a good friend at the time who's now one of my best friends. Um, basically, I went to him and we're at our uh, at V1. And I was like, we need to calculate. Like, did you get destroyed? Oh, yeah, I got destroyed. Dude, but did you, you feel pass? like you were ready, though? No, I did not feel. Oh, when you went in, you didn't no, feel no, like I knew, you were I ready. Was. Okay. Okay. Um, actually, well, the thing is, like, it wasn't even that bad before then. It was like midterm, I got like mid seventy something like that. I was okay, right? And then it, it was like, but then I didn't, I like coasted pretty yeah. much the entire rest. Of no, the but semester. you know that feeling when you're cramming and you're like, yeah, I can't cover. Any no, of I this. didn't. I didn't really do much studying. Oh, you didn't even cram? No, no, I I crammed, but it yeah. was like as much as I could. But yeah, literally every five minutes I had to send a text. Yeah. So I really couldn't do too much. No, that's tough. Um, but basically, yeah, that was rough. And then I got through the rest of the... And then, was she going through exams too? Not to the similar level. right? Not like engineering what level was she, exams. What was she in? Uh, I can't remember. I think it was like... She passed them? Uh, some, not communications. Something along those lines. But she passed them? Oh, yeah. I yeah, would... I would flip by like that no, would no, be no, tough but i that'd be tough i'm not that kind of guy yeah so i know but like i would be mad um but it was just like okay wow that was crazy so yeah. uh the rest of the exams weren't as bad but basically yeah did no, you guys get into a fight after the exam or oh no? there was no, no no well i can't remember honestly that was just the biggest thing i remember because i was but you didn't blame her right no no no. well that's now bad. i'm saying it as like yeah because when, no, when i say it was really more just a growing experience right yeah that's where I no but that's super tough like yeah, because getting into a fight a few hours before exams. You don't is know your like the worst possible scenario. You don't know what's better for you because I was also like very uh, introvert. Like I didn't have much confidence in myself as like emotionally. Yeah. So that's where the discourse was, where it's like I knew it was wrong. Like I knew my side was right, but I didn't know how to like cut it off or like be re- realize that these are this is not the way it should be. Right. and that I need to move on from this but I was like oh but everything else was fine so I was like I got through the rest of it I passed I got but my grades weren't that high and then second year ha- or second term happened and it was even worse and then next term happened it was even worse did you were you working harder as the terms went on or were you still slightly slapping? harder slightly but it was i was still in the relationship right so yeah. basically oh so you like think I that was, impacted yeah i well it was a decent impact um, but basically what was like what was wrong with it what was going on it was just consuming too much of your time too much of my time like focus i don't want to blame i'm not blaming it all on that it was more of like it was a combination of literally that going back home be uh like money like i was very stressed like your parents were saying that we can't afford this exactly so you have to figure it out yourself not figure it out but it's more like hey um we're only sending you like forty dollars fifty dollars for uh groceries for the next two weeks or and and it was like oh yeah and how much do you need uh i don't know i don't know but basically imagine i was like okay so i'm gonna buy a whole eight kilo bag of rice that's gonna be enough i'm gonna buy some juice some bananas because bananas are cheap and then i'm gonna buy eggs because eggs i can probably eat a decent bit of eggs and then i'm gonna buy some frozen uh, whatever frozen stuff I can buy because yeah. that's pretty bulk. You can buy a bulk and you can get it cheap. Right. I didn't really want to eat like beans or stuff like that, to be honest. I could have, but it was uh, I was it was enough money that I could just live off of that stuff. Did you ever ask your parents like what their mindset was at that point? Mm-hmm. Were they just like running they out of money? Too. They yeah. were struggling too. Yeah, like they were struggling as like much three or kids. Even worse than I am. Right. And yeah. So you can imagine how the situation was, especially when trying to put one kid through university, right? Uh, especially in engineering and then that was before i was doing co-ops so they were paying for your tuition exactly and uh you didn't qualify for osap because i did i did qualify for osap a lot just or barely. just a little just yeah. barely yeah yeah that's um, that's why it became really hard because your both your parents were high earners and so yeah but they were just not the best in terms of saving the money no i know but that's where it, it was there was no financial aid right like no there wasn't really yeah um so basically there's that and then it was a com- it was literally a combination of everything mm-hmm. right and then on top of that 
you're coming in with the guy who was just naturally smart, naturally good at things, who didn't know how to study, right. going into a field where you need to study. Right. Like I, I only really learned how to study by like third year, and then that's when things got a lot better. But trying to study and learn things in third year when your foundation is terrible doesn't get you net you very far. So mm-hmm. I got a lot better in third and fourth year, but my foundation wasn't good, so I didn't really, I couldn't have been as far as I should have been. Just literally, just because my knowledge was uh, my base was not. Do you think Nano was the right program? No, it was definitely not. When did you realize? One hundred percent not. When did you realize that? Pretty early on, maybe like second year. And uh, what made you realize that? When I took chemistry, no, actually, maybe in first year when I took chemistry courses. Those were hard. Was it was it the chemistry courses that were hard, or were the labs just complete? Like no, I don't want to do this that. for the rest the of my life. Well, it, was huh? all, it was also that, but it was just yeah. hard. Like I just knew. Well, the thing is, here's the thing: because people told me when they got into labs and they had to do like uh, trials and sit there for hours, they're like, "We don't want to do this for the it rest was, of my honestly, life." Honestly, it wasn't even that bad. Yeah. It's more just like. And how I much are you paying me for this? Like people often complain about that too. But continue, yeah. I just didn't know what like i wanted to do right literally i had no idea what i wanted to do I did just, you ever consider switching into like software eng or mechanical no, my or... grades were not good <laughs> we're not good enough for that. you tried you went no to i office? didn't try but i was like no i don't think my grades are good enough for this mm-hmm. right especially after first year like my average was like like i was just barely passing all right and then like i was like in the 60s back then so you can imagine how it was and then by the time i was in third and fourth year that's when i got it back into like the 70s so I was like, okay, let's just average, you know? Right. So it was not bad. Um, but essentially, I just knew that it wasn't for me. Um, I think I think that's one of the biggest flaws of university is when someone goes into the wrong program and it's, it's a really hard program, it is almost guaranteed that their marks are going to drop. Everyone's mm-hmm. marks drops, mm-hmm. drop, but they their marks are definitely going to drop because mm-hmm. it's the wrong program for them. Mm-hmm. And then for you to restrict them from switching into a program that they actually want to get into is you're potentially ruining their life. You're, you're just trapping them. them in. Yeah, you're mm-hmm. ruining their life because how else is... Um, I mean, you went to IBM, so you understand this, but how else is someone... IBM. You went to IBM. Uh, well, IBM. Oh, I yeah. thought you said IB. No, no, yeah, yeah. IBM. Yeah, yeah. So, you you would understand this. How else is someone going to learn programming really, really well if they're in a nano degree, but they really want to do even software do engineering? I did customer support. Right. But there were a lot of people that were in nano that were working for Apple. And I'm like, that's really cool. Kudos it's to you, but you're side. wasting. Yeah. Literally just they're learning, yeah. they learn it on the side, right? Yeah. Well, like it was, and like, it's tough. I'm 99% sure it wasn't school that taught them that. Right. They just definitely have to learn it on the side. But the, the school is doing a massive disservice. Yeah, so, but I think that's basically, it's like, you can't, I know it's been said before, but it's like, you can't have kids decide what their future is and spend tons of money at 18 years old, 19 years old. They do not know anything about themselves. If I had, like, if I had to go through it again, it, but, but I'm here where I am because of the experience I've had, because of the co-ops and the experiences and the people I've met is where I realized what my strengths are, what I'm interested in. Yeah, and, and now the fact it's that you went to the, better. one of the hardest programs in Waterloo. Yeah, and it's, I uh, well, the, the only reason why I didn't transfer as well is because, or anything like that, is because I wanted to finish. I wanted to finish what I started, especially uh, my parents would kill me if I didn't. <laughs> like if you switch to math. Yeah, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah I, I don't think they'd like it. They'd be like, "We spent so much money on engineering, and you're gonna, you're gonna swap." Yeah, and then probably go back a year. Yeah, they would. Usually they would, that happens. They like, would like literally kill me yeah. before that happened you know yeah. so essentially that's why i didn't do it um and i wanted to just complete but basically yeah and then that's how i went we got into the beginning of this podcast where i said about uh you know going into ibm that's how i got the lifting journey was because of you know school uh personal life finance everything how'd you get the ibm job uh so like literally by fluke like i applied i did the interview um, it was just a subpar interview, but they, I think they already hired someone else in my class or two other people in my class. And they're like, they were really good. I think they'd like to be together or like they'd all be good together in the same team. So then we were all part of the same team. But weren't you applying to nano jobs or hell no, 
Hell no, those don't pay. <laughs> they what either do you didn't mean? pay or you need research because most damage are research. Okay. And those do not pay. And okay. nor do I want to do a lab job. I wanted to go into tech. And was money, <laughs> you wanted to go into tech from year one? Yeah, from like Nano. Yeah, yeah. So basically, I was like, you know, that's where money is. That's where I think I want to be. So I think when I did you tech. decide you wanted to go into tech? I No, just like anything in tech, really. Just like it. But you realized that first year? Oh, well, something along those lines, yeah. And because more is because that was more like the stigma. That was more like okay. the. Uh, but you you would have realized as soon as you said I want to go into tech, you would have realized I'm in the wrong program for tech. Yeah, but Did it was you? also at the same time where it's like I can't swap. Yeah, There's I know. No yeah, no like you're stuck. There is no way I was gonna be able to yeah. swap. Also, it was by the time it was the second year. That's when our first call, I think one actually. Oh, because you're eight stream. Yeah, we're eight stream. So it was like one B. That's yeah. when I can, and that was like, I was like, oh no, I'm not going to be able to swap. My grades are terrible. Yeah. At that point. Like they were already terrible. It was not going to happen. Yeah. That's yeah. fair. So that's. So was IBM your first co-op? That was summer? my first eight month co-op. So I did. What was two, your first? I did four two, months. four months. My first four months was at a factory. Uh, doing what? Uh, just chemical factory, like manual labor. Manual labor? Yeah. Like, like titrations and stuff or no, actual no, no, manual like labor? Like filling, like filling like bottles and stuff like that. Like packages, bottles, stuff Holy like that. Holy Yeah. And, and job like might approve that? Yeah, because they're literally because they're literally like, yeah, you don't have any other job. Like basically it was working with chemicals. Yeah, right. but you're this is this grinds my gears to the core. Oh, right. yeah. Waterloo Engineering, you're the top school in the yeah, country. But, it was, but it's also the first call. Like I've had other people in my class who worked at like one worked at like a steel manufacturing factory. Yeah, I know, I know it's common, but it's still like it's annoying that you're at the top school, you when when I was in grade twelve, I was told that like co op is the reason like Waterloo is amazing because of co op. Mm. And then when you get in, you realize that your first co op can be packaging stuff. It could be. You're like this, but is, it is, but yeah. after that, it got a lot better. Of course. Yeah. So then, a second co op, I worked yeah. at an engineering firm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was definitely not anything related. Doing what? I was a structural designer. Okay. So basically, it was for civil engineering. Nice. But then outside, but the job changed a little bit you know, halfway through where they acquired a construction company and essentially i became like a project coordinator okay afterwards did you so like I did that? a lot of little project man yeah it was cool just because okay. you got to you know handle like a team you got to work with like spend like money like i literally worked with like a lot of contractors i priced jobs it was really cool and then walk the jobs and try to figure out what the important uh, stuff was try to figure out exactly um what parts of the job they needed done and then you like document it, all of that. And then there's like bids and you're trying to like, you go into a room and you're trying to guess, you're trying to like make rough final down, uh, final numbers in terms of a number that will get you the job. Pretty cool. Pretty high stakes. And I was like, what if I mess up a number? Then like if I submit a bid that will do the job for 50, 50K when the actual job price is 500K, are we just, did I just screw the company for $450,000? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Never happened. You um, never made a mistake. No, no, no. <laughs> Hell no. But basically, um, that was I it. Swear. So it was really good. So that was a really good experience. Got to know a lot of people there. Um, basically, I was actually... So the reason why that was a really stressful job there was because that was actually, I got the job inside my se- uh, second term co-op. So like the co-op term started already. I didn't get a co-op job. I didn't have a job lined up. Right, so I was like kind of frantic, stressed yeah, stressed mind. out. Yeah. Essentially, that I just, I just broke up. I just broke up with my girlfriend back. What, what did that. you break up with I her? Or she broke. I up? did. Yeah, I, I broke up with her. Do you want to talk about what was the final straw? Mm, it was basically just a culmination of things. Just basically um, where I realized like this is not a healthy relationship. This is not it. Were you distraught after? A little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but I like. I'm, I'm sorry, I need to run to the washroom. Give me <laughs> Go for it. I'll pause it. Go for it. <laughs> phenomenal, right? Yeah, real good. So yeah, you were you were saying. So girlfriend, this is two B, you said? Two A. Two A. Two A. You break up with your girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Uh combination of things you said. Yeah, culminate basically. Do you want a plate or anything? I can give you a plate as no, well. No, it's okay. Okay. Basically it was just not it in terms of where we were maturity wise and like the time investment and everything like that like i wasn't in a state where i should i i could sustain a relationship 
you know and i think in terms of our maturity points i don't think either of us was at a point where we were we should have a relation or at least we had different values and all of that um because i'm a lot more of an individual that needs even now like i i'm very bad in terms of communication um do you I, hold and, like do you hold your feelings to yourself no no, no not commun- communication as in like i don't need to like send a text like at all until like i basically like send a text to my current girlfriend maybe like three times a day you know and basically and that's too little and then uh and then i just give her a call at the end of the day because that's when you know this is the time i've dedicated to you know um just us doing our own thing and stuff like that and being able to like hey uh end of the day this is when we can chat and stuff like that that's for me what i uh, prefer in a relationship right and i don't think quality time is sending a text message and or like just being able to text all the time right in my opinion so that's something there and basically that was one of the big issues where it was just a lot of time like she wanted yeah constant constant, constant communication and i was not I was and not did you tell her it. engineering is super difficult and you yeah, don't yeah exactly and okay. it's like it was a lot of like oh, i we need to dial back but it's like i don't believe you need to because like couldn't shouldn't you be able to study and send a message at the same time it's like no that's different focus right you know so it was like she said that shouldn't you be mm-hmm. able to do yeah more? like not it was just a difference in terms of like understanding she didn't realize how hard waterloo engineering mm-hmm. is uh, yeah but I, I i'm not gonna like there's we there was parts on both ends yeah you know so i just don't think it was a good fit yeah but yeah certain people i think some people inherently i guess this is true for all people because like i can relate as well you don't realize how difficult something is until you go through it yourself or mm-hmm. some you've seen someone go through it that's really close to you like if I see my parent day in and day out go through something, I might have way more empathy that this is a super difficult academic endeavor or job or whatever not. But if I don't have that reference point, I can hear about it once in a while that like Waterloo engineering is really difficult, but I won't truly get it. Well, so I'll always fall back to the point that like you really need to spend a lot of time with me. What I like to say yeah. um, now is more... It was she was more into interested in the idea of a boyfriend, yeah, rather than myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so in terms of she adored the idea of what her idea of a boyfriend is, yeah. but I, that wasn't me. Yeah. So, in terms of my interests and stuff like that, it wasn't. And I think that's also a little bit in terms of just growing up, okay. right? So it was just a, at a stage in our life where it was just different, and. For me, it took a lot of mentally, like, growing myself to be able to say, hey, this isn't working out. This isn't healthy. When did like you know that? Oh, uh, well, I knew it for a long time. I just wasn't, I didn't have the courage. Like, even when you gave that exam and you guys were fighting for 4 a.m., you knew, did you know at that point that, like, I really bit. don't want to do this anymore? A little bit, but at the same time, I'm, like... You still yeah. wanted the relationship, Because right? it was more like I genuinely cared yeah. for her. Yeah, absolutely. But it's not the, but... There was aspects of the relation that wa- wasn't flowing, and I didn't yeah. and I didn't really see those red flags until you're in in them, and I didn't really have too many close friends that I could discuss these issues with, and be able to um, state what's going on. Like I did have a best friend, but he was also uh, like in another part of the country, and as I told, like basically when I say I'm not good at communication, I talk to both of my best friends literally like twice a year yeah i send them like a message like a few times a year because that's all i need to do to like maintain contact and if do I they don't see you do, daily, they do the same yeah i feel so like one of all, like... i feel like one of the best friends is more uh would like to talk a lot more but i'm just i'm literally like i i'm trying to change it i'm trying to work out because literally that's what i need that's my um what I need to, for a sufficient relation, uh, friendship yeah. or relationship, but it's not what others are. Right. So I can't, like, it can't, it can't just be based on me. So I'm trying to do a little better in terms of, like, reaching out to people, trying to be like, hey, what's up? Because if you don't, sometimes if you don't send a message, it's never going to happen, right. you know? So trying to be a little Did bit John better. Did John date that. a lot? What's that? Did John date a lot? Uh, you can ask him, but yeah, he did. He did. Uh, so did day. you ever ask him for No, he and I advice? were 
his relationship and I were because he was more of like a giver in terms of like when my parents were like low on money and stuff like that he'd sacrifice a lot what do you mean in terms of like you know giving money doing like like he how did he give much, so money because he, he, he was still in he, school he jobs he worked part time that's you like, worked part time no he too? did oh he only did he did, yeah. he did work he worked part time all okay. throughout university like got he it. paid for a lot of his bills got it like okay. he was very very self sufficient okay he did not want any issues that I'd had Okay. In university so you guys weren't close because of that or mm, it was also a lot of just in childhood like in childhood like we weren't the closest what's the reason for that mom just like what we happened? just butted heads like in Not childhood to, like yeah a little up. bit like we just didn't interact with each other too much oh really just not too yeah not too much do you guys more, get into more... physical fights a lot or not really no not really. no no but just like didn't really no. weren't that close no not that close okay and did that change at all as you were teenagers or not really that not much really that much it was okay. more like nowadays where it's like we've grown up to the point where like yeah you seem just, like i don't know you guys that well but you guys seem fairly close now mm, yeah it's okay it's not too bad could be better but, but you never more... but you never talked to him about your relationships because not he'd really, been no. through quite a few right? yeah we don't we don't talk to each other about our like our relationships at all like a little bit more oh, really? now but not uh, but back then no not at all okay not at all so yeah. essentially did he ever talk to you about his, his relationships no, not that either no okay. i literally there was one of his girlfriend uh, like exes yeah that i literally didn't even meet and i didn't know like at all oh wow because i was just not never how home. how long I was never were home. they dating for? i have no idea okay i don't know and like i don't know pretty much anything about were your family. parents like all for dating uh growing up or um did they have my... to get used to the idea they they got used to the idea pretty quickly okay like in the beginning they're like no yeah but it's also like i'm the i'm a male child yeah so it's not as big of a deal for them right. for my sister they're like your your brother's allowed to date when he's like 16 yeah but you're not allowed to date until you're like 20 okay got so it. she had to hide her relationship for a little bit got it right? and you guys didn't like you and john were either of you protective yeah for your sister yeah, yeah. so then like how were you protective did In you meet the like, boyfriend and yeah well not really it was more like we're just like hey you need to take care of yourself like we'll allow you to do things like we'll let you we'll drive you over to the van stuff like that but yeah. remember to take care of yourself be safe you, like, you text your friends have to text us if anything happens that's what we deal right right Here, so that's let me how move we this a bit closer go ahead yeah so that's how we um yeah that's how we were like protected there okay mm-hmm. were you closer to your sister than to john <laughs> a or little not bit yeah, yeah i guess yeah. I, w- I guess you would say so but like we didn't really talk that much or anything either. oh no is that because know. there's such a huge age difference or it's just like... i think it's slightly the age difference slightly mm. slightly um but basically yeah we just I, I was just not really close with my family members also considering that i was like away because imagine you're two years older yeah you are so i'm already two years gap in high school so there's like quite a bit of high school that i my siblings weren't in and i was never in the same high school as or school as my sister was right um actually maybe i I lied me in elementary school but did you ever try to include john in the same friend group when you were in Mm, high school no he was more he had his own friend group but he was also very a lot more popular and so outgoing than i was oh really very much so and what he was outgoing he was the outgoing guy and what's the he's just a lot more he's very friendly he's very i I don't want to say he's extroverted yeah but he's more he's just more outgoing okay and i was like was he a lot more athletic too what's that was he more athletic in high yeah school? yeah he, he did rugby and all that okay right on. so then he, he, was, he was just natural he's also just very very good easy to talk to and all that right. and that's where for me it was like a lot more that i had to grow and uh, learn about myself in university so that's my growing stage so before that and i was like also not confident in myself again like but he I'm was sore. somehow yeah he was like, do you like do you have any idea why that was the case that like i think both of more... you have a similar upbringing it was more Same because he DNA. was yeah but it was more so because he i think it was the lack of attention he got from like my parents where he had to do things himself right right so he had to be outgoing he had to be like the like do do things himself sort of deal prove himself oh, okay i see because i was like just you got the my... most attention then. exactly wow yeah right so, so he had to figure it like he middle child to... stuff yeah he <laughs> middle, to... middle child issues right uh-huh yeah uh-huh. so he had to yeah, he had to find other people that he could find comfort from and love from, 
which came eventually came from his friends and like his popularity whereas yeah. for you it probably came just from your parents because they were yeah. all up in your business well yeah but it was not love <laughs> huh? it was not love or anything like that yeah yeah but it was oh, just, it wasn't love you no. didn't feel affection not really okay. no i think they were very like they were very rare very very rare to say like i love you and stuff like that you know right so it was a uh, interesting time right yeah. i it's always fascinating how brother sister relationship works cuz i'm an only child oh okay. so i i have i can only imagine imagine <laughs> and or see fantasize. what like other fan, like cousins are like yeah and like, like fantasize yeah. on how close people would be and like initially like like most of my life i loved being an only child and then uh i went through like a very hard time with like my mom passing and stuff and um uh, that's when i realized that maybe like having that relationship with a brother or sister that's mm. going through the same thing Might is very able. valuable it is and that's why for me like in the future i do want like a family and stuff like that and raise a family in that regard right right Cause... and you want to have multiple kids because yeah. because it was the dynamic that i had mm -hmm. right um like literally i argue with my girlfriend and i'm being like are we having three kids uh, we're having three kids she's like oh, no we're having two because she's yeah. two uh she's uh, it's just her and her brother but i'm like right. we're three yeah but and it's financially like tough right it like, is i can imagine three. and i can't imagine what it is like in the future so right. like, not saying it's up in the air but it's more like right we'll gauge our options then right right so we were talking about yeah you breaking up with your ex-girlfriend mm -hmm. you get into ibm yeah um yeah, you applied to IBM. Was there mm -hmm. any... Do you remember, like, what your rationality was when no, looking just, at the I job description? Job. Or, I literally just applied the jobs. Was IBM a big deal for you? Like, was it, like... Or Not it didn't really. even matter. It was didn't just, really like, matter. a it was just cold like, I apply. A job. I needed okay. a job. Okay. Were and they then, paying well? Do you remember how much they paid? Uh, it was, like, mid-20s. Was that very... It was not uh, bad. That was a lot, was pretty, right? Yeah, it was a lot for the, uh, for that kind of job. It was yeah. pretty good. So I was like, okay. Was it, was it like, a QA-type job? Or what was it? It was, like, tech support. It was, okay, a, in, it. it was I would say it's glorified tech support like in between so people customers between, are calling like, you yeah. and yeah. being like help me with this yeah, Is it, yeah it was like we had tickets and then we had to assist them Got but it. then we would recreate the issues and like send that off to, uh, to, dev, to dev right so, and then that's where they would like get uh, create software packages to assist the clients or stuff like that or do you have a separate QA team or you were the QA I think team we, in that regard? I think we were pretty much like it was okay. a mix got it, got it. right so we were doing kind of doing both in that regard. Um, Did you like it a lot or just okay? no, no? <laughs> it, it, it was like just dealing with the issue and trying to like help customers in that regard was not it in terms of. But it was also like a learning experience for me, like trying to figure it out because that was also the first job where I had to deal with like customers in that regard, like being like tech support, trying to talk to them and stuff like that. That there's actual people who need assistance and I need to provide customer service. And that was my first experience with that. And also in terms of dealing with like an inventory of issues. Not like so in the in the co-op before that where I was working at the engineering firm, it was big projects and then minor projects. This one is like you have 30 concurrent issues. You have 30 tickets on there and each one needs actioning uh, at least once every three days, some clo uh, more so uh, than that. Some require bigger issues, some require smaller issues, and then some big issues that you have no idea what the hell you're doing. So then it was like you put it, you put it behind you. You're like just leaving it there, and then two months down the line, you're like, I haven't really done anything for here for two months. Right. And they escalate the issue, and then you're like, Oh no, this is bad. Was there someone managing over you that said that you left this one? No, 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 play. not really. No. They, I mean, okay. I'm very. I'm pretty meticulous when it comes to like. Um, but where were you feeling diligence. the heat from? Was it the customers that you were feeling the heat from, or no, was no, it, it was a literally just that one situation? Okay. Yeah, just that one because I knew what yeah. I was doing wrong. Like right. I knew I was putting it off. I knew like that I wasn't reaching out for the issue, and I was like, "Oh, I can do this." I've been doing were, a little were bit these B two B end customers, yes. or were they like the normal folk? I think it's B two B. B two B. Okay, yeah. got it. But basically, we were just like working through them essentially just trying to figure it out um and then i was just doing it pretty much solo but then when they escalated it senior level support came in and they're like hey what well, what have you done with the issue it's like oh i tried recreating it in my own environment i wasn't able to recreate the issue after i got connected their uh data like basically uh yeah. software and stuff like that um in their packages i tried to recreate the system and i couldn't recreate the issue and then they're like oh but uh i tried it in my system uh, uh 
in my environment and I was able to recreate it. It looks like you didn't uh, have like the correct um, in like versions or something along those lines. Right? Sure, yeah. So basically, there's something, uh, there's some mismatch there, and I was like, yeah. oh, but you could have solved it just by asking us, right? And I was like, oh, okay. That's when I realized, hey, I need to reach out to people. I need to talk to people. Right. Like if I don't, if I have, if I'm having issues, like I was already doing it, but like you can't leave. You have to do everything. Right. You can't just leave one thing behind. Yeah. And that's where because you're gonna be blamed for it. Basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or just like it was. Yeah, even, you're responsible. I was responsible. It's it was like, more like put it I was in. doing the work, but it was more like I didn't go out to reach out. So that was one specific. Everything else was pretty much fine. But I what's the like, what's the reason you didn't like it? Like you said, you didn't like it. What was the, I just didn't like the, working on so many concurrent issues. Like that's and fair, just yeah. the like exhausting environment, I guess. What was the environment like? It was not like it was. It was like a lot of other costs, but it was more just like. It was like customer service in that regard. I didn't like being like technical support. That's right. And, and just the job in itself. It wasn't like working with people is nice, but not in where I'm. They have like, issues and they come to you. Yeah, but technically I'm, I'm doing that right now, but right. it's just in a different capacity. Right. Um, I think it was I think it was more I didn't like it literally just because I put things to the side. Like if I had a fresh start, yeah. I think I would have liked it better, but I wanna be in a state I wanna be in a position where I'm more in, you know, I'm bettering an environment or bettering a company or like trying to assist people in terms of like, you know, their well being. I'd rather do that rather than help solve someone's like software problem and they're like Hey, um, I'm gonna send you uh, an instruction uh, instructions on how to solve, and you're like, I can't read the instructions. Can you just go onto my environment and fix it for me? Right. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. We're not instructed to do that, but I can walk you through it, sort of right. deal. Right. You know. So that's the difference there. Right. Um, but basically, that was like the stepping stone there, and then the next co-op afterwards. So that's when things changed. Then I started working out. Things got better. And then I got more confident in myself, being able to talk to people, um, getting to know a little few more people, and then I had actually saved some money. For what gym? Co-ops, what gym like were you going to? The IBM gym. So, what does it like? Tell me more about that. I've never been there. There's literally uh, so it was uh, IBM Ottawa Lab. Okay. So basically, in that gym, there was, I think, one bench, one squat rack, okay, one Smith machine, okay, like weights up to like eighty pounds. What What were the bars like? Uh, I don't know. I think it's just a regular, like, like, like LA Fitness yeah. hammer strength type bars, or were they like Olympic Alico? No, bro? it was not. No, okay. it's not like Alico bars. Okay. But it was or just, any like decent bars? It was okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then basically they had that. They had, um, what's the uh, like? They had like a trap bar or stuff like nice. that. Um, so you start working out. Do you fall in love right away? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and you so. work out in the Maybe evening or morning? During lunches. Okay. So I work An out. hour is enough? Yeah. Wow. I rushed through it. I was so quick. I was hella quick. On five by five? Yeah. I was hella quick because I just wanted to get uh, be done with it. Okay. And then... Or because that was all the time because essentially I was living with my roommate at the time and my roommate was also working at IBM. Mm-hmm. So I didn't want to like bother him with like, hey, I'm going to stay after work right. and then I'm going to work out and then can you pick me up? So I wasn't going to do that and I didn't and like he can it was just very convenient to like have him drive home. Right. So then I would just work out during lunches just to make it simple. Okay. Yeah. Got it. That was basically it. So that was that was probably your escape from reality, right? Cuz IBM wasn't like uh you weren't enjoying it that much the call. Well, it was it was and it was, then like it was just a day to day to day. Yeah. It was just a day. It was literally just all of my anxiety there was because I put behind like I just like left that one uh, issue behind and that right. like plagued everything right. but i i would think in, in restaurant like thinking about it now i don't think the job is that really that bad right D- yeah. did you ever think uh like you want to do maybe software development no coming out of that no no well Never. i mean after that well after that i did i applied to just job whatever random jobs again and then was this full time for which after ibm was full time right after i no after ibm was another eight months what was that? I worked company? at a trading firm. Oh, right. I okay. worked as a hardware designer. Okay, got it. And let me tell you, yeah. I had to learn the programming and all that. They paid a, like a, quite a decent bit more, 
But at the same like time, 40, I 40 bucks, 30, 40 know, bucks. It's like 30. Okay. But I did not know Very. anything. Yeah. And I wasn't good. Like literally, mm-hmm. and I hated the job. One, because I didn't know anything. Two, because what were you working with? Like C, like low level C um, assembly code type stuff? I have to think. I would assume PLCs, but that's not really programming. No, no, I forgot. I forgot okay. the programming language. Okay. It's really bad because I literally put it all, put it all behind me and I don't even think about it anymore. Okay. Continue. Uh, yeah. But basically, yeah. That I was eight months? Yeah. I didn't care. I, like, I did not care about it. Uh, okay. In the slightest. Okay. Like, not at all. <laughs> then why'd you, why'd you pick it? Because I just I was just applying to random jobs again. Okay. And that was the one that you got matched with? Like, that you yeah, cleared? because I think they ranked me, but the first person didn't want it. Okay. So then okay. I got uh so then I got it and I'm like, okay. "Oh, okay." Yeah. And basically the the boss was really nice, but he mm-hmm. was like he was more of just like a he was not a manager, he was just like an engineer, like engineer. Right? So he was more about just doing his job. So then when I came to him about issues and stuff like that, he was very hands-off. He did not like help me in the slightest. He's just like, "Look up the books, look up program stuff online. I'll give you small projects." Yeah. Just do it. And then stuff like that, but he didn't include me in like the um, the meetings and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it was like uh, you're just like uh, you're just, here to learn and just like exactly. do whatever. You're not a you're not you're not contributing to the company. Exactly. So it was yeah. just it was more. I know so the a, attitude. Yeah. It was more so a learning experience, and yeah. then after I was like, wow, that was not it. Like I remember, there's lots of days where I literally come in, say hi, boss, and bye, boss, and that's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is not what i want to do in the slightest like i do yeah. not want to spend the entire day programming that was not me that's not what i wanted to do and that's where i realized <laughs> that was not it yeah right money was good yeah not what i want to do in the slightest mm-hmm. um so it was not fulfilling and then that's when i you know i finished uh university stuff like that did you did you were you starting to enjoy any courses in nanotech by that point or nothing no else? not really it was okay. what about your fydp i know you did that with patrick right? yeah, yeah it was yeah. okay uh, nothing that you like could really dig in. No, no, no. Okay. No, no. It was just just to get just back. to just to get. Back. I did not. I did not care in the slightest. Okay. So did you start applying to jobs in fourth year? Uh yeah. So basically, the biggest wake up call there was when I, uh, my dad works at Telus, right? Yeah. So he was really wanting me to push me into like becoming like an engineer in training at Telus. So then there's like a EIT program there. Do they start off at six figures at Telus? No. Okay. Um. I don't know what the uh, earnings was, but it's probably like 60 to 80, something like that. Oh, really? I, I thought so. it'd be oh, higher. Okay. In terms of the uh, EIT there. I, okay. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. Uh, right. But basically, that's it. Yeah. So then we go through. Um, I get to the final round, final yeah. interview with the, I think, the director and uh, another senior like engineer right. and then like HR. And essentially, I butcher it. Uh, I got like dumpstered. The HR or which one? No, no, with the, like, all the interview questions. Like oh, I, just, I got, I just got dumpstered. I just. And what's the reason for I that? Because your dad probably. No, no, I didn't. He, he didn't really help prep me that much. Oh, he didn't. No, he didn't. Oh. Okay. Um, but basically. I'm sorry to hear that, man. It was. Uh, I thought your dad would help a uh, lot. No, no, no. His. Okay. Um. Yeah, I just didn't study. Like not at all. What and, were they but, asking? Like, what topic was it, or what? Oh, um, it was just typical like RF stuff. Okay. But it was just like I didn't study. Like I yeah. didn't really care. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and that's when I realized that I was like. Well, I did not then, but then it's like a year later, year and a half later, because um, basically as soon after that, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do a part time. I'm just gonna work, um, and essentially um, just apply to jobs in the meantime. But that's when I realized, like, Where I were did you not care. Part-time? I was working at Home Depot part time. Oh wow! Okay. Right, but then it was just more like I didn't really like care. Like I- imagine like you're trying to apply to job and you're just you just don't have like you're not passionate about it, no. right? So imagine. And then COVID came, so that was just so trying to figure myself out and like just going through the motions. And wait, so you had been applying for for like oh a year. yeah, because like COVID year. came March 2020. of 2020. 2020. So it would have been yeah, you would have been like applying for eight months or so. Right, right. Yeah. So then I was yeah. like no, I going through. So then uh, COVID happened. So I was just like, so okay, did I'm just the ride. did the amount of care go down because it had been eight months because that often happens like was, you it, can burn yourself out i was well i was burning myself out and it was just like interviewing sort of, and not interviewing getting not getting anything and then i was yeah. just like Ugh, you know what and then continuing on and then covid happened so then like i just coasted a little bit i was like i'm just gonna wait a little bit until things get a little bit better and then it's like were you starting to get stimulus checks at that point no 
Okay. So, but it was basically just like, uh, then how are you sustaining yourself? I was still working home, uh, part time. In it, that was sufficient to. Yeah, it was, yeah. I was still uh, living, uh, working, uh, living at home, right? Yeah. So, so then it was, it was fine. And then I realized in 2021, I was just like, dude, what am I doing? And I, after one um, interview, um, it didn't, I didn't like. It didn't work out. I forgot what job it was, but essentially it didn't work out. Oh. Um, and then, like, work I, out as in you got the job. No, but I didn't like, get they it. They rescinded the no, offer no. or something. No, or? no, no. Like, okay. I they just like uh, I didn't move on to the next stage. Okay. So I emailed back, and then they basically uh, just told me that you know it was not bad. It's just I we didn't think you were a good friend. Like we didn't like feel any passion from you. Yeah. And I'm like, that that's a wake heart. up call. Yeah. Where it's like, what am I passionate about? What yeah. do I care? So then I was like, you know, if I think back on my life in terms of what I did in terms of all of my co-ops, it was always the people that I loved working with. It was right. the, like every single job, regardless at the factory, at the en- uh, engineering firm, at IBM, not really the trading firm because they didn't really talk much. Right. But basically, <laughs> the, all of my other jobs, yeah. it was always the people. I mm-hmm. love working with the people. And I remember the in that when i told you in the second co-op where the that i got into the job after the co-op term started right so essentially i asked the h the hr was the one who brought me in and i asked him why did you um bring me in and he told me that you know it's not always the smartest people or the like or the highest grades are going to be the best at right the job yeah sometimes it's about um the passion or like the willingness to work that i get from people like sometimes that's the deciding factor Mm -hmm. and personally for them in their experience they've noticed that it's the people with the average grades or the less than average grades who put in the more effort who absolutely who realize the value of their jobs of their positions Mm -hmm. you know they're not looking for the future but they're trying to build themselves now and really show their worth now right you know yeah um so that's where i was like oh that's me right and i said and that uh, and that and i thought about it um uh, then like uh, two years ago where i was just like maybe i do like i just want to work with people i want to help people out and in that same sense like get them to like at least better them and have that opportunity there and not just be you know just some random dude sitting and like doing programming stuff like that where you don't know what effort you're doing you don't know the results of your of right. what you're doing right mm-hmm. so then i was like okay i'm gonna go study hr i'm gonna go apply to hr and i'll see where it goes and then i'll try an hr job so then imagine i applied i started uh in summer 2021 i or september in 2021 i got into school for hr sheridan uh i don't know for at york Okay. I'm just doing a certificate program until I can uh, get my certification. Um, my By the way, certificate. for everyone listening, that is the most nuts story I've ever heard. What? So nano, <laughs> nanotech engineering at Waterloo, <laughs> which is insanely difficult. And then going into HR, realizing it's not for you. That is exactly. absolutely nuts. So just imagine, just but like, continue. Yeah. it's... That is bonkers. Of a I story. know, but it, I'm glad but, you did it. But it's a bonkers but, but, of a story. But it's it's like when you're going and not even finding a job after nanotech engineering is that's too. It's well, it's more like I yeah. Like, no, but I it, it. but here there's a there's a caveat to that. Yeah. So basically, after once I got into school mm-hmm. uh, for HR, and then oh by the way, this is forty percent protein. Oh, this one yeah. That's because it's the it's the skim milk, uh, baby bell. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So it's five grams of protein for fifty calories, which that's is forty percent. Yeah. So, so basically, that one, the white one. All right. Yeah. So basically, um, within a few months, that's when I started applying to jobs because I was like, I need to do learn a little bit about HR before I go in. So then, a few months later, first job I applied to, or like I applied to quite a, a lot. I applied to a lot of jobs because they're like, why the hell is an engineering applying to HR jobs, right? So then, first uh, interview. Did I you land, get a lot of interviews or not? No, not oh. like none. Okay. Um, wow. So I imagine I applied to like maybe a couple hundred jobs and I got like three interviews. Maybe even more than a couple hundred. Yeah. So basically, three Insane interviews. First interview, I, I got it to the interview. I didn't make it to the second stage. I was like, okay, this is... Well, well at least I got now experience with interviewing. Yeah. And the amount of studying I did for that interview, insane. Oh, yeah? Like, I looked up HR every, books or like... No, no, what's... like I did... I looked up... Like, 
I looked up everything about the company. I looked up their values. I looked about the culture. I looked up like uh, everything in terms of like who they're uh, like working there. Yeah. Um, like research you never like, done research, in like, your so life. So much research. Yeah. And then after the and then after the first interview, it didn't work out. And then I'm realizing, yeah. wow, That's it's old. crazy how much when you're passionate about something. Yeah. And how much work you put in, and that's how little put work I put into the, the previous uh, interviews. Yeah. It's a big eye opener. Exactly, and then the second inter, in the one where I got into the second stage. Yeah. Uh, well, basically, like the final interview. Right. Um, I thought I landed a job because I did so much studying. I I thought I did really well. Yeah. I didn't land it, and yeah. I'm like, okay, but uh, it was really cool. The recruiter actually reached out to me, gave me a call, and basically just said, it, there was someone better with a lot better credentials right we really wanted to take you but we do need some experience for, for this role right and i'm like That's... this was before york no no this was after like oh this, this is after, after york. this Got is it. after i started school oh so you were at york no no, no I'm, this is online york is online okay so okay. this is you're gonna do simultaneously online i'm york still i'm still and... in school i'm still taking you're still school. oh yeah, still, how many yeah. years do you have left i i i finish in april okay right nice. So it's not bad. Yeah. Um, Continue. Yeah. But basically, um, yeah. So essentially, I got into the and then I got into and but it was really nice that he actually reached out to me and gave me a call. Huge. Because a lot of people just like send an email. Right. Like they don't really give you a final call, and be like, "Hey, you didn't make it." Yeah. Absolutely. I think that takes a lot of gratitude. Gratitude and, and also just like a personal touch, knowing that. And he said, "Hey, it didn't cross our past didn't cross this time, but maybe in the future it will." absolutely so it was very cool yeah um and i was like okay and then basically the next job i was applying to like a mix of like hr and like and tech um basically implementation and then but it was for like an hr software company for like hr uh clients mm -hmm. and the refer or for clients that would uh learn need advising on hr mm -hmm. so i'm like okay so then i i could eventually work my way into hr after that yeah. And then I told them that and I told them my story and I told them everything. And basically they're like, hey, we actually have a position for um, uh, for recruitment at this one uh, for one of our clients. Mm -hmm. Would you like to do that instead because you wanted to do HR? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, yeah. now we're talking. Yeah. So then basically I got the job and then I was like, wow, like night and day. And that's basically where I'm at now. So, so are, you, are you picking up the phone and trying to recruit people to apply to your client? No, no, no. So basically, I am part of the HR for the company. Okay. So I work which for, company is this? So I work for the minery. Yeah, but what's the client? The client is the uh, Marino's Automotive Group. What do they do? Because I don't know. They're Marino's. an automotive group. So yeah, but they're like, a dealership group. Okay. So they sell cars. Uh, but like, which cars are they primarily selling? So or the brand, all types of cars. They sell. So in our group, we have Honda, Volvo, Subaru, and Jaguar Land Rover. Okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah. So we have four dealerships. Got it. Okay. And we're in Etobicoke. Okay. Yeah. So this is one location then? Well, it's four dealerships, but we're all yeah. in the same plaza. Got it. Essentially. Okay. And Marino Group owns that that whole, uh, like the four dealerships. The four dealerships, plaza. yes. Got it. Understood. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, you are handling the HR for that? Well, for the for recruitment. recruitment. But basically, it's very... What do you mean for the recruitment? Like every time someone wants to become a dealer at the company? No, no, no. So and... essentially people working at the company. Okay, got So it. essentially I do the recruitment for all of the jobs there. So okay. if someone wants to be a technician, if someone wants to be a salesman, if someone wants to work in service, if someone works in accounting, digital marketing, got any it. job there, I do all the recruitment. Are a lot of people applying to that company or do you have to like do outreach? No, so we or... have, so basically since I work for um, the, a client, uh, like the, like I'm based off of the consulting company. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're con uh, we're contracted out to work as the HR for that company. Okay, got it. So for uh, for Marinos. So essentially, um, I'm just I'm working there, and I do the recruitment. But the software they're using is my parent company. Got it. So then this parent uh, the parent software is a human resource information system where they have like is uh, it like Bamboo HR type something stuff? like that? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, Similar. they have. Uh, a higher application that connects to Indeed got it. Um, and all of that. Right. So basically, that's where we got all of our uh, applicants from. Got it. And then that's where I do the interviews. I do everything from um, getting the clients, doing the interviews, setting up the interviews. Uh, How many interviews the did you checks. do today? Yeah, I did like 12 interviews. So, dude, I've been talking nice. a lot today. <laughs> anyway, 
But basically, it's just like like the first round process. interviews. Yeah, first round first? interviews, and then basically after you go and through how that, many made it through and how many didn't. Mm, I'll put through like two of them, three of them. It's okay. Really how cool. does that like? Uh, what's the deciding? Criteria? It's so the way we do is the first interview is more of like a cultural fit. Yeah, and uh, trying to gauge um, if they are who they say are they are sort of deal. You know, so for me, it's like checking off the boxes in terms of that, um, and then after that, in the second interview, it would be a lot more technical. But what, like, what did the ten not do right? Not good fits. Uh, and how could you tell? Like, I always wonder from a in, interviewer perspective. Interviewer perspective yeah. in terms of why not, they're not a good fit. Yeah. In terms of just like experience wise, and also just like like mentally, I also have like the parts of the job that are required so in terms of like what the values are in terms of uh fast paced uh, all of that stuff and going through like is it one of those things that like when you see a person come in from a big company or like they might not be able to uh work in a fast-paced environment Mm, it's like what do they say that makes you feel like okay they might not be able to handle this part of it is also a lot of it is also a cultural fit okay just knowing uh, if they'd be able to succeed in the role. Because some of them I want to take in during their experience, and then I'm looking into their past experience, and I'm asking them about like fast-paced environments and stuff like that, or like their work capacity or be able to build relationships and stuff like that. And yeah. it, I know they're not at that stage of their career or like their um, experience-wise to be able to take in, because I know a lot of the roles there and what it requires and what we're looking for in terms yeah. of ability and all of that. And I just know that they... like chances are it's not going to work out based off of the answers they give um a lot of it is intuition yeah. and to be honest with you it shouldn't be that way yeah um because obviously uh, there's a lot of bias involved in that um but in terms of this even like the nervousness that they have sometimes exactly, that but, throws them off you know what i mean mm-hmm. but in terms yeah. of this in uh in this industry yeah it's less so technical than like let's say if you're hiring like a programmer or something like that so I would say a lot of it is more intuition than it should be. And it shouldn't be that way. You should have a dedicated list of variables that you're trying to gauge each client on or each not client, each uh, applicant on like, yeah, are are they able to talk coherently? Are they um, like basically the key requirements of uh, each position? Mm -hmm. And that's something I want to implement in the future. And that's, uh, that's stepping into another aspect where basically I'm the recruiter but I'm essentially doing everything in, in terms of HR. So literally health and safety. Even salary negotiations? Yeah. Like I've had like meetings with the owner where I tried to like petition to bump up the wages for several roles in the, in the dealership. And, then and how'd that work out? We actually did it. Okay. But it's basically imagine like, like going to the owner and having them talk to you being like, hey, yeah. so why should we do it? Yeah. And then you're trying to like advocate for your cause. Yeah. And it's like, it's a lot more nerve wracking than I thought it would be. But at the same time, you really build. And it's very nice because I, I'm i doing more than just my job. And I can learn a lot more and do a lot more. Right. And I, it's like doing things like that where I told you where you can benefit, like help everyone out. Yeah. So that's, that's why cool. I'm just, it's, it's just really fun. And it's a lot more, like every day is new. Like, Do you think you're working for the... Uh, for the 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 person who's applying or the company at the end of the day. What do you mean? Who do you think you're biased towards? The reason I ask that is because there is a there is a sentiment that some people have where they say that because the HR is employed by the company, they often always work Sandy. in the interest of the company. So I to think make that's... sure that there's no legal repercussions or any of that. All right. right. So basically, that's oh, I hate that like stereotype. Yeah. That it's a or that one. sentiment because, and that's why there's some people that are saying like that want to move HR, change the name to like people and culture. Yeah. Because that sounds more friendly. Because HR yeah. already has like a negative connotation to it. Right. And that's the biggest thing that I dislike about the industry because, in terms of my research, in terms of like the. Um, like the books that I'm reading in terms of like the people that I'm following and like that's not like if you think that like HR is working against people yeah, and they're working for the benefit of the company then you're just working for a shit company okay 
at the end of the day. So you think that's just like a like a a very inaccurate stereotype? It is. It's an accurate stereotype where you're working for a terrible like if the, like the count the company is doing you a disservice. It's not the HR. Okay. Because in my opinion, right. In like my values wise, is that if you like HR should be for the people. Right. Because if at the end of the day, if the people are, if the, your workers are happy, then they're going to provide extra value for them. They're going to be loyal to the company. You're going to have less turnover. They're going to be more dedicated. They're going to want to do more work. They're going to be like, they're just going to be more efficient. They're not going to, they're not going to leave. They're going right. to take in less money because they love their job. Right. They enjoy their job. They love working with the people, everything like that. Right. Right? right. And if you support them, that'll get you the profits. That'll get you the customers. That'll, because if you're, people are happy you can imagine how they're going to treat your customers right absolutely you can imagine what they're going to do in terms of their work mm -hmm. and then that's going to translate into profits for the company and that's how you get long-standing members and you get less turn turnover and that's how it just benefits your company in general right, right. so if you work for the uh, the people in that regard and you're on their side then technically you're technically also working for the company because you're doing things that better them but in reality that's much harder to do in a lot of um, industries and companies these days because it's just like it takes a lot of effort to get there. Right. It's hard to find companies like that uh, do that. Like basically, I was reading um, in this one um, what was it audiobook that I was reading earlier it was like the example with Walmart, where basically their previous owner yep. was very much for the people, was very much about like. Uh, who was the previous I owner? Forgot, I forgot who Because I thought it was a family who I started. I forgot who it was. Okay. But basically, whoever yeah. uh, take, uh, took over it yeah. was like, just lost that cause. Once you lose, yeah. you're uh, lose sight of what you're doing. Yeah. And it just go, uh, turns away. And I think a lot of companies these days are a lot more um, just continuing on. Like they're just doing whatever will get them through to the next day. So if you're doing whatever it takes you to do the next day and you're not thinking about your values or what you stand for, then you're just, there's nothing concrete that's keeping you, that's going to get you over for the next 50 years. Like the company that I've been working and I'm working for has been here for 50 years, right? Right. Uh, it's for over 50 years. Right. And their owner is, I, I don't, I haven't talked to the man too much. But every, for all of the people that I've talked to that know him and have been here for so long, they adore him. Right. He cares for his people. Right. He, it's amazing how much how highly they speak of him. Right. And that's what happens when you have a leadership that really cares about the people and knows the people and is for the people. Right. Then that's how. You, and then there's a lot of managers and people here who have been working for over twenty years. Right. And that's how you build that long. And that's basically a big thing that's changing these days because like. You can imagine in tech, like that's probably a good, yeah. like people hop between like every six months, one year, two years. Absolutely. If like, if you told someone, um, like me uh, saying to someone, hey, I'm going to stay here for like three years I'm, or four years. I'm going to uh, 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 like, see how the job is and everything like, like that's crazy. Yeah. Like I see on resumes, people hopping every year. Yeah. Six months. Absolutely. And it's like, there's no, there's is nothing that, Is that them. a red flag? In, in, in the thing is, the automotive industry, it's an older style industry. There's a lot of older people in it. Yeah. And the way they see it, they see someone who's there for six months. They're like, That's why are they there for six months? Right. Why are they hot? Is there something that, like. So, do you still interview someone like that or do you just I do. put it in? I do, but it's more about the reasoning as to why. But I know. What's, a, uh, what's the best reasoning you've heard for why uh, someone oh, jumped It's off? always uh, something, it's always about. Um, cultural fit or they didn't see um, they didn't like the people or the company and something like that and that's a that's a reasonable no justification not really because what might make it different from there from here yeah right like you, you especially you if like if they tendency. if they were sensitive about a boss there what's sensitive about a boss here what if what if it's a I mean in tech we hear that a lot but it's a it's oftentimes like every year the market rate for an employee as of, is at a certain level, and then the the company you work at never meets that market rate. So people often jump job because they want to get the better paying job to get market rate. Yeah. So essentially, here it's a lot more. So if that if someone was to tell you that, I think that's a very valid. I think it is, but at the same time, it's like should that be looked down upon? A that? lot of so a lot of things here is because. 
in this industry, it is an older style industry. Yeah. So a lot of things are a little more, are like a lo- on a lower scale, on a smaller scale. So pay is one thing for sure. Yeah. Of course. Um, but at the same thing, it's like, it's all similar jobs, right? So if you're working the same job, then at the end of the day, like it's going to be, pay is going to be pretty comparable at the end of the day. Is it? Because usually what I've seen is like, if you stay at a company, uh, you get an increment of like, let's say two and a half, three yeah. percent every year. But then if, if you, you job hop, hop you're gonna get, you're get a twenty percent. So it's 20%. not that kind of like this is not that industry. Right? Okay, it doesn't. It's it not doesn't. That industry. So you haven't seen the market rates climb. It's slowly, it's slowly increasing, but at the same time, it's. But not, is it only it's, like three percent every year? It's not. Yeah, something like that. It's not picking up as much as, uh, like tech. Okay. So it. that's why it's a little bit more of a red flag for us, where yeah. especially when you're selling cars, because in terms of selling cars. It's commission. It's, commission. Yeah. it's all a percentage. Yeah. And so percentages how, are standard, I'm assuming? Pretty standardized. Okay. So it's like, why would you go sell Hondas there yeah. and sell Hondas here? Mm-hmm. Why? Like, what's what's pushing you from doing that, right? Like, it doesn't make sense, right? Or, like, we can understand if you're selling, like, Hondas and then you want to go into luxury vehicles. Or maybe you want to work your way up into becoming, like, a sales manager. Is the rate much higher on luxury vehicles? No, it's, like just, way it's just a GP. What's a GP? Uh, the gross profit. So basically, there's just a lot more. Um, like, if you're selling a two hundred thousand dollar car versus a fifty thousand dollar car, oh, okay, you're just gonna earn a lot more of the percentage or a lot more money from the percent same percentage of a more expensive car. Is it? But much- at the same time, there's less more expensive. It's probably easier to sell or it's easier to sell more cheaper cars. So it's like a trade off. But who also the clientele is money. different. But the clientele is different too. Who ends up making more money usually? You've mm. probably seen both people. Both ends. Hmm? Both ends. Both. Like, yeah, but who makes? Who ends up on average? Who makes more money? Mm. The person who's working at. It really depends. It really it depends on the salespeople. Okay. It really, really depends. You can't say too much yeah. there, just because in the climate right now, there's not uh, there's a car shortage, so you have to consider that as well. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I never knew how lucrative car sales could be until oh, it's until be- until I saw uh, what's that guy who's uh, on the NBA? Uh, I don't know the 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 Sikh person who always buys. Uh, he owns a Honda Hyundai, and he always buys like premium seats. I don't know. I don't know too much, but basically, I I think I know who you're talking. That about. man is like a billionaire. <laughs> it's nuts. It's like it's nuts. Yeah, you can earn. Six figures. Yeah. Easily? Not easily? Easy. No. Not easily. But there's the possibility. Yeah. Like, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's not bad at all. Like, yeah. even, and the thing is, in the sales jobs, you don't even need much experience. Like, I, like, you don't need, like, a, like, a, like a university degree or anything. Mm-hmm. If you have some retail experience, if you have some stuff like that, I'll look at your answer. If you can talk to people, if you can talk to me, and you can have a good conversation. You're, you're gonna like. I think you'd be a good fit. It's more about. It's literally all about just being able to talk to people. Right. Day, right. And you're saying, yeah, if if they can make, how many of your guys are making six figures? I don't know. Yeah, but it's not really a figure I want to say. But at the same time, it's like, it's it's a good number. It's a decent number. Okay. Majority, you would say? No, I would. I'm not gonna say anything. But it's like. Hold on. There's people Can you look up it. this information online? I don't know. Like when people try to get into this field, I how think, do the, they I think when they look it up, the average is like seventy-eight, so like in the seventies. So not it's bad, not bad. Right? Yeah. Right. And is that a forty-hour work week or what's yeah. the? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or right. is it more or less? Uh, slightly more because okay. you, you like you have to outreach and all of that. Out, not outreach, but it's more like accommodating clients' times. Okay. Right? Because customers okay. are always going to work on your time. So if you want to hustle for more, yeah, we're open from literally twelve hours each day, right? So right. then, if you want, if you want to work more, then stay longer. Right. Right. right? That's um, all on you. So basically, there's that. Yeah. Um, Do you want to get into? I don't know if you can talk about this. I can also cut this out after, mm-hmm. but um, do you ever think about getting into different types of HR, like tech HR oh, or anything that's, of that nature? So that's something that I want to do into the future, right? So basically, I do want to branch out into different fields. What, um, do you want to get into tech HR? Is that more lucrative or not really? I'm not sure. I think it is. Yeah. But the biggest thing for me is more about personal. Like money is one thing. Yeah. Like I do want to get like earn quite a bit of money, but the biggest yeah. thing for me is more 
personal growth especially in this economy money is, yeah like, it is so things I are do... we had a nine percent inflation rate last year right and uh yeah groceries are insane yeah and i just want to grow personally because at the end of the day like at the end like in my peak of my career i want to be like a director or like a senior vp of hr right, right. like i do want like there's I, a C- isn't there such thing as a cho yeah i think there's a chief, a chief human resources chief officer. of human i think so yeah that's what josh is that is yeah, yeah it's it's, yeah, it's he's pretty a C level yeah so basically i do want to get into like pretty high up but at the same time for me like my goal yeah. is like i want to build like grow like a ragtag a ragtag crew of like misfits and like build them up to like something great i want to manage because i really do think like i'm very much so about the people aspect of things and that's crazy coming from an engineer do you have a team <laughs> of hrs right now yeah we're, we're a team of three but that's in your company or is that just personal in my in, in our company okay the uh like when i was working at uh my previous company i was told yeah are you what time is it well, are we still good to go we, yeah, yeah okay maybe like uh, another half hour yeah um yeah i was told that like the when the vp of hr came in she brought in like a bunch of independent hr recruiters that did a bunch of work like oh. they were contract basis so like if you were ever to elevate to that level i think what you'd need is like you having a bunch of people that you can contract out exactly. to that would be doing the like one portion would be doing talent recruitment the other one would be doing like all the nitty gritty stuff but they're not employed by the Maybe. your employer yeah i, I remember I, I don't know if i want to be like a consultant side you know no but she's employed full, full yeah. time but, but she, she just, has like a, her yeah her connections her yeah like her i don't know what the right word is but the her gang of hrs yeah that will so. do end to end and they'll be like billable yeah and, i know uh, i i've seen those and, uh, i've seen those yeah and yeah. the and the founder said that was like like he was insanely impressed by that execution okay because he'd never seen that before i'm not sure and i was surprised because technically i could go into like a consulting side yeah but at the same time i'm not sure if that's the way i want to be because well consult- can't you just say like to your current company you could be like look i could be extremely efficient in this 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 if i have five more people that i know i just have to build them whatever like no, it's not 70 like oh it's not like that no it's i thought not. that was common okay no no I, no, I no, no for me in terms of not not in terms of common but in terms yeah. of like what we're doing because it. it's more like we're like a stat like set staff like my boss does, is like the hr manager my uh co-worker yeah. is like uh does uh, training and performance got right? it right but yeah. then we do every i do everything from like health and safety to like policies to got compensation it. to recruitment all of that stuff got right yeah. so basically it's well rounded in that regard but at the end of the day i don't even know if like because for me hr is really big but at the same time it's very trans like it's like me doing recruitment for a lot of jobs it makes me realize just how like you can transition into different fields or different roles from different like parts or right. like different industries you know mm-hmm. like you don't need to do you don't need to be hr to do hr right you don't need to be um in sales to do sales you don't right. need to, like to be a project manager you don't need to have done, done a lot of project management in the past right be a successful project manager right you know yeah. so it's like i see a lot of app- opportunities but i just want to be more of like a manager in the future Please. right absolutely because yeah. i think that's a big thing that we're missing these days is a good basis in terms of the people side and like managing people and getting their and like the efficiency there right. and really trying to build up that side um and I can see a lot of improvements that we can do in this current company. So that's yeah. why I still have a lot of... Like, have you had to let people go? Yeah. How does that work? No, it's just... It's more just... Uh, in like in the, It's more like... It's... A lot more it's more performance-wise. So they don't work out... Uh, perform Like, don't work out well. Is that... Like, is that decision already made for you by the time it gets to you? Yes. Or, because what it's you... not me. It's more management. It's more of the... So do they... More, do they come to you with like a performance evaluation yeah, or do you give them a performance evaluation? They, they to give, like, no, they give me okay. whatever, like the, but you tell them, them, make sure that's ready in case there's any legal legalities. Well, in, in the end of the day, cause it's, it's very, at will though. It's so. very hard 
Yeah. To terminate someone with cause. Yeah. Very, 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 very difficult. Okay. They can, because people can lawyer up and they can come at, come at you. Okay. Uh, for a multitude of things. So okay. most of the time it's without cause. Yeah. And without cause you have to pay them out. Okay. That's generally how I do. Uh, when you say pay them out, like uh, give them some sort of severance, and yeah, it's usually exactly. like a week per year. Kind a of week thing. per year, yeah. And then if they're over five years, then there's also like. But that's like menial for the company, right? Mm, sometimes it isn't. It, it kinda, isn't. Sometimes it. Uh, sometimes it's a decent bit if they're commission. Yeah, but it's one week per year. Like in the grand scheme of things, it depends. Like if you're a smaller yeah. company, it's still like uh, I- impactful, right? Okay. Yeah. Right. Like not like not everyone's like so- this. But why can't you just do without cause and just get it over with? It seems because like sometimes way more it's work. very cut and dry if they break the law. Just I guess it's tough. I mean, I guess you could say they like deserve it with cause, but it's tough because I I don't think the government gives them any severance either. Then, you know, like mm, EI yeah, and like stuff. When you send employment in your ROE, insurance. When yeah. if you send it in your ROE, they have to write in the reason as to why. Yeah, with cause, like I don't think they provide. I'm not sure. Anything. I don't know. I don't see that's where my like HR knowledge and stuff like that isn't as great. Like I don't know the uh, the government side of things, right? Because yeah. that's past your. You don't really. Mm, I might. Yeah, well, I could look it up. But your, it's not. Yeah, but that's not like stuff I regularly you're, you've up. already handed off the the torch. The yeah, the torch to the government. So like you don't really deal yeah, with that. It's like hands off at that point. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I don't really know, but I could look it up. I mean, because it's very very rare. What do you? Actually, maybe we won't get into this. I had a topic about the the tech recession yeah. and what your predictions are. Do you oh. want to do that or not? Ah, uh, well, we have or like let's, 20, we let's, have like twenty minutes. Okay, let's do what the do gym. Think, what do you want to do? Yeah, let's do gym. Let's do gym. Okay. So where's gym. your where's your bag? So we're gonna get into okay. What's in a so first define so Rendo, you are twenty six. I'm twenty six years old. What's body weight? I'm at like like working weight is probably like 195 okay i'm probably like 200 pounds right now because of like holidays okay one that so 195 pounds and what are what's the squat bench and that look so like? squat pr is still what i said before is i think like 425 yep uh bench is 335 yep and deadlift now like if i had to do like a one rep max maybe like 465 475 okay right 475 so what's the what's the total then 1200 uh, so 425, so 475, so 7500, 500, 900, 900, uh, three, thir- uh, 1235. 1235. Yeah, 1235. Very impressive. Yeah, very, very, very impressive. But, but if you divide that by 2.2, what is that? That's like 560, 550? No, yeah. like 540, 540 yeah. kilos. Yeah. So my goals is to make it to regionals. Yeah. And, uh, qualify for regionals. Yeah. Regionals is 567 kilos, I think. And then after that, I forgot what the next one is. But How should... difficult do you think that will be? Oh, that's that easy. Huh? To go to by yeah. June, July, yeah. I'm going to put up, I, I hope, but I'm pretty sure I can put up at least another 100 pounds to my total. That's amazing. Pounds. Congrats. I okay, think... let's see your gym bag. Let's, uh, uh, so what's, what's in a 1,200 pound total? Please. Well, the thing is, I'm also passionate about it, right? Yeah, so absolutely. It's going to be a little bit more different. So basically, absolutely. I need a bigger bag. Okay. This is a little too small. Okay. Uh, but basically, this was a while ago. You should so, get my bag from Mech. I got really? it from Mech. It, uh, I've had it for four years now, not a scratch. Not a scratch? Yeah. Okay. And one of the military guys actually complimented it. They're like, oh, we get our bags from here, too. So this is pretty good. Because it's so good. Well, it's pretty decent for now. So basically, okay. on the sides, yeah. the crossbow. Do you use it every day? Well, I, whenever I go work out. Whenever, oh! Whenever I work out, because it's just really nice in terms of like rolling your back. Cause my, cause Do I you have foam roll as well? A little bit. How yeah. how long? What's that? It's like three minutes, five minutes. Three okay. Minutes. It's not long. Each body part or just total? No, 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 in total. Okay. Fo- uh, fo- uh, like, fo- like one song. <laughs> okay. That's how I measure it. It's basically oh. one song. And then I do this for like a minute. And then I go do some whatever stretching is for that day. Like if I'm squatting or deadlifting, then I'll do hips. If I do, uh, well, and hips and squats, I do uh, some lat mobility because um, I need a little bit more mobility in terms of the arms. Mm-hmm. And But that's pretty much it. And if I'm benching, uh, a little bit more of the chest, right? So that's essentially it. And then, Did you learn that mobility yourself or no, well, your coach some, helped well, you? Part of the coach, some elsewhere. Okay. I mean, my brother helps me. But out you've too. always been doing no. uh, stretching? No, no, no. Because I hate that. That's like no, my no, passion. It's, it's, it's a hate it. Hand. No, it's a pain in the ass, but you yeah. should do it. You should really do it, especially yeah. if 
you know you have parts that need assistance. Absolutely. Like for me, I know my hips are really tight. Yeah. They're crazy tight. Yeah. And so I need to slowly loosen them up. Right. So it'll help out. And then... So you do five minutes a day? Yeah. Like every I, time you work I, out? Yeah, right? yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And then... Okay. We got the liquid chalk. Okay. Because before they didn't allow chalk at Good Life. Yeah. And now they do. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like... So okay. do you overpay for that? Is that like 20 bucks for yeah, the bottle? Yeah, it's like 20 bucks. But it's lasted wow. me for like a whole year. Wow. I got... I think I got 12 bricks for 30 bucks in 2015. Will last me a lifetime. Yeah, lifetime. So, so That's I'm, never... I'm I think I'm out. on my third brick. I'm holding out. Yeah. I'll wait. I'll wait for okay. it. And then yeah. basically in here is where... Yeah, it's just like my wallet and stuff like that. Okay. Um, Headphones this, as well? Uh, no, no. It's, well, I have my AirPods, but I didn't bring it here. Okay. But usually my AirPods... Pros or just AirPods? Pros. Pros, okay. Yeah. Do they, fit, do they stick a lot better? Oh, so much better. Okay. And then I got... So, Maynards. Uh, do you, like, when do you eat those? Uh, when I'm, because <laughs> I In come between. after, I go after work, right? Yeah. So I go, uh, after 5 p.m. and then that's, I don't have dinner. Yeah. So literally, I just need to snack on something while I'm working out. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so and it helps you a lot? No, I just want to eat something. Okay, got it. <laughs> or else I'll be I think it's a bodybuilding myth that you need, like, a no. sugar rush. So no, there's a bunch of bodybuilders that, It just that, like... helps me out. Plus, okay. it's just something that I can eat. Okay. And then... Sleeves, that's nice. sleeves. When did you get those? Well, dude, that was back in 2018. Have I you think ever? It was around the time when I met you guys. Have you ever met? Thought about like getting new ones? No, these, okay. dude, these are so tight. Yeah. They're oh, just, still. No, it's because I've gotten gain weight. Okay. I'm nice. Literally, like, and the thing is, I'm gonna. Well, the thing is, you're. you're Were you 180 when I met you, or something? Or? Yeah, I was like 180. Okay. So now I've gained like 50 pounds. Yeah. And then, have you gotten nice. some deadlift slippers? No, not deadlift slippers. Just. You want to tell me? Fill it out. Ooh, these nice. Notori- Where'd you get these? Notorious Lifts online. Uh, is that a local... Uh, can you, they, can, you can buy it from... Uh, I've never heard of Notorious Lifts. Are they big? What's the deal? They're pretty big now. Now? They're pretty big now. Nice. Um, basically, these are the 2s or the okay. 2.5s, I think. Yeah. Basically, they're just so close to the ground. You can What's the it. cost? It's like 80 bucks. Not bad. Not bad. And what and were you, you using like, before like this? The grip, like but the what were you using before these? I was using Converse. Or Vans. I was using some very some Vans. And how did you realize you want? I, I just saw it. I was like, yeah, you know, I might as well try it. But it's like you feel, even compared to Vans, you feel closer to the ground. Yeah. And the thing what is, about like, barefoot? Slip. No, no, no. You slipped? No, You no. tried barefoot and no, you no, slipped? No, no, I'm not going to okay. do barefoot. Why not? Uh, I don't think, I think you have to wear shoes and comps. No, oh, okay. I think so. Got it. Yeah. Uh, basically, these are good. Okay. Really good. Okay. Really good purchase. Yeah. Um, I think you can buy Still them. brand new? Yeah, they're literally yeah. like two weeks. Wow. And then okay. straps, figure yeah. eight. Okay. Because figure eight. What's the difference between the figure eights and here? Let's see. Uh, yeah, like, what do you do? So basically, I've never had figure you eights. just go, you go here. Yeah. Wrap around the bar. Yeah. Wrap around the bar. So this is the bar, and then you go here, and then you go, and then you grip, and that's it. Oh, that's super easy. So you don't need to, so you don't need to strap up. Josh Pinto just bought the Cobras. How much were these? Uh, I think they're like 20 bucks. Oh, these might be worth it too. Okay, but these are slightly size too big and these are mediums. But opinion. you like them? They're not bad. Okay. It's very yeah, easy. You, like yeah. literally if you see me, if you see me in videos, this yeah. is me. I go both hands. Yeah. I wrap them around the bar. I go here and then I go. That is. Done. Do you know what the Cobras are? You so. know the Versa grips? I think so. They're copies of the Versas. Oh. So he paid 60 bucks plus tax. So 70 bucks. That's not happening. Yeah, so I should tell him. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah, okay. But these aren't the good quality. These are literally, literally Amazon brand. Okay. Right? But they, they've they lasted? How, how long has it been? Like two months. Okay. It's okay. I don't what were you using them, before? Them then then what them. were you using before this? I just liquid straps. chalk? Yeah. Okay. Just Got it. I was just training the group. Okay. Got and it. And then bands. Okay. Just... Stuff. Yeah, I wish I had better bands. Yeah, you know, like this is like five pounds of force. Yeah. yeah, what were, what are you using the bands for? Just, just stretching? Yeah, a little bit, but it was also before, so I can do some like hip mobility stuff. Okay, got that. it. And these are too the pressure, yeah. like it's not strong enough. Yeah, and they're also really cheap Amazon brands. Too. Okay, and then I have, dude. Do you remember these? Uh, Did no. I get them? I think I got. Oh, them. nice. Yeah. The straps. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I, those are for bench. Yeah. Are these the twenty inch or thirty six inches? I think they're the shorter ones. Huh? 20? Yeah. And Do you like these? And they're not the stiff. They're oh. not the stiff ones. Okay. Do you like them? I don't know. Or are you going to get I, new I, I haven't used them oh, okay. in like months. So you're not even going to use it for comp? The thing is, I don't... I feel like... 
they don't do anything. Mental. They're mental. Okay. They're not like I don't think they really help you out that much in lifting. Okay. But it's more mental. Like they. You've never had like issues injured. with your wrist. Well, they're okay. I okay. mean, especially for a one rep for one rep. Yeah. I am very good at just keeping it. Okay. Uh, locked. Yeah. And then the last thing I think in here is just the belt. SPD belt. Yeah. So you had the injury before. Yeah, the prong. Yeah. Uh no, we you don't. We're, you gotta you you gotta move up to a lever. But you you did have the insert. Yeah. And then what happened to the insert? I sold it. Huh? I sold it to another gym bro. <laughs> oh, how much? Uh, I sold it to him for what? Eighty bucks, sixty bucks. And how much did you buy for two hundred? No, like one hundred twenty, one hundred fifty. All in? Yeah. Okay. It was, that's it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And how did you make the decision that you want to move up to an SPD? What like what changed? I didn't want to do the. Okay. Okay. Every time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, Josh's SPD. Yeah. One of the screws came off. No way. Yeah. So he has to call them. One of the screws came off. Yeah. Oh, dude. But I also take good care of mine. Like people like throw it around. I do yeah. not like. You don't throw, throw it around. around. I just literally after take it, I just drop it on the floor. Just yeah. Because I do they, not. How long has it been? Like a year. Okay. Because you can see it fraying a little bit. I didn't a think it would fray. Yeah. Yeah, but it's oh, like, it's amazing. gonna, yeah. it's gonna yeah. last. Do you know they're coming out with a new belt? They are? New SPD belt, yeah. They are? Oh, get this. Um, I saw, there's a shout out to, to this guy. So there's there's a guy at Good Life Oakville that comes these days. He goes to Laurier. He's 21 years old. Is His name Anthony? is Anthony D'Souza. Anthony. Veggie Boy Lifts on Instagram. Shout out to he's, that guy. <laughs> that boy's a monster. He's yeah. That boy is a monster. He's That's nuts. Huh? Yeah, he was in the gym earlier. Oh, he was earlier. there today? Earlier. Or yesterday? Yeah. 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 yeah that boy's a monster. I cannot believe the amount of raw strength that boy has. Yeah, he's kinda huge. The, yeah, like body wise or like uh well, lift wise? Both, like lifts wise. I agree. And Josh insane. said Josh said he doesn't look insanely big, but no, I think but he's he looks also massive. But he's also like He's two hundred. He's like yeah. He's like five or ten pounds lighter than a ninety three. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like two hundred. Yeah. He's, he's and uh, what's uh his his total is seventeen something seventeen oh three like something like that. It's crazy. Boys nuts. Boys nuts. And I I see him every time I see him bench. It's like the weirdest thing because he has no leg drive whatsoever. Yeah, it's no and he the has boys no push arch. Him. Yeah, no arch. arch, no leg drive, nothing. And the thing is about his yeah. old bench. Yeah. It was like very in narrow, like yeah. very close. Grade. Were you there when he was doing that, or that yeah, was like yeah. he just showed you? Yeah, he was he was doing it because oh. I saw him before he like did his first meet. But then, oh now really? He's, now you, he's like, have you known him for a while? Uh, not like before his first meet. So before okay. a few months. Yeah, because wow. basically it was I think it was during the summer. Yeah, it's yeah. not that. But yeah, and like to see him squat and deadlift. Yeah, but, but it's also just because like you don't see powerlifters in a good life. Like yeah, but like he's he's doing strong, record numbers. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. he's doing record like strong, numbers. Yeah, yeah, like he, record, strong, strong power. He like. he's a world's type guy, guaranteed. Because he's a junior still, he's twenty one. He's yeah, he's he's gonna put in uh, numbers. I I haven't seen anything like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Especially in like a public gym. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's 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 kind of cool. I always compare him to Jonathan Gorgas. I think he's the Jonathan's yeah. the strongest I've seen, and this this guy is definitely stronger. Yeah. Because his, his deadlift is over 700. It's like uh, 725. No, no. I I've think, never seen no, that. No, no. I think he... In the meet, I think he had like 680, 690, okay. something like that. Right now, he's, now. he's pulling yeah, 700, I don't think, yeah. over 700. Yeah. So it's like crazy. 725, yeah. Actually, there was a guy in Waterloo. The, he was like... He has like... Maybe he was like Hispanic or something. Or he was like half black, half white. And that guy was pulling in high 600s as well. Yeah. Super jacked. Do you remember who I'm talking about? He no. had curly hair. I forget I think his name. So. I think I think I know. He him. was a soccer player, and then I he just focused so. on lifting. Yeah, he tore his like you're... chest, and he tore his chest, and then he just started close gripping, and he was close gripping like over three plates. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but his like yeah, his deadlift was high yeah. six hundred. Now it's just for me. It's like working through getting the lifts down. Yeah, just just, just literally just putting my head down, and just getting the lifts up, yeah. just staying con- concentrated. Because before when I was doing the programming, I didn't know if I, what I was doing was correct. Right, you know, if terms of my list. Were you asking like Jonathan and Matt and like 
No. All of these guys? No. No, no. I was or they were doing their own thing. They were doing their own thing. I was just doing my own thing. Now it's like... Were you ever competing at that point? Or no, no, no. no. I mean, my first comp is going to be in like June, July. Okay, so. never even thought about competing. At I was point. thinking about it, but I was like... And yeah. I was not at a point where I was like... Happy? I'm, uh, happy with my uh, like my progress. That's fair. But now I'm like, okay, I'm, I've got goals. Like I just Do you wanna... remember Matt? He used to bring a barbell. <laughs> yeah, so now, now that, I, oh, that was okay. so insane. Yeah, well, was like, like, okay, you know, if you're, if, you're, huh? if you're passionate about, it, you're passionate about it. Have you actually? Now I get it. I I might not have gotten it at that point, but David Lade used to do the same thing. That's probably where he got Matt got it from. No, it's okay. It's like it's, it's whatever insane. you're passionate about, right? It's insane. So, it is okay. I've just never seen it before. Yeah, so I'm oh, just yeah. I'm just gonna see. See where it goes, because right now it's just going up. Like lifts are going up. I've changed my bench form, and now it's like. How'd you How'd you meet like your coach? Should oh, he was he was already partner. working. He was already working a good life. He was already working out from there, and I knew him from high school, and he's good friends with my brother. Oh, you knew him from high school. Well, not really. I didn't really talk to him, but like. But you knew my, my, my brother uh, knew him. Okay, so that's how. Is he doing your brother's programming too? No, no, my brother. Oh. My brother has like a weightlifting coach. Okay. Yeah. Is your brother gonna compete too, or no? He's already competed. He is. Yeah, but he's uh, he has. Is he a, doing good numbers? He has a bad habit of just getting injured, so it's just it's because he overexerts himself, or he's no, just prone to just injury. Th- just he's prone to injury. I don't know. If prone to injury is the right word, but it's more just like just things happen. Do you think he could be as big as you if he was like powerlifting and following your diet? Because you're like way bigger than. Uh, you he's oh, I'm also like ten. I'm also like fifteen pounds heavier than he is. Yeah, but you're still like. Like your frame, well, it's looks just, uh, massive. He's more, he's more lower body. I'm more upper body. And but do you think? Do you think he's he could injured be... his upper body too? He's injured his shoulder. But do you think if you guys worked out, do you guys think you you come from like, like very similar be, genetics? We'd or be no? similar, yeah. Like 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 strong bench and stuff like that sort of deal. Even like proportions, like do you think you'd have he'd be just as wide as you, or do you have like are you just were you just wider growing up than your brother? Mm, I think shoulder similar. to shoulder. I think we're similar. Yeah. It's just I okay. really just focused a lot on OHP when I was going, when I was working out. Got it. And Did you ever do bodybuilding stuff or no? No, I do not care about what I look like. No, not, not at all. Like not, not 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 at all. But it's just like it's on the back of my mind. I don't really like. For me, the biggest thing. Like is when you get too chunky, strength. does it bother you or not at all? Mm, I don't mind. Oh yeah. Mm, okay. Like for me, the biggest thing is I want to get strong, yeah. but I don't want to be fat. Yeah. Sorry, we got 15 more minutes, right? I, I, I actually yeah, want to like jump ten, onto maybe one. Maybe like 10 more minutes. Okay. You, you don't know this, but like if you look at the target audience, we actually started off as a gaming podcast. You did? Yeah, yeah. So okay. I have a gaming. Yeah, so I have a gaming channel called Gava Gaming on TikTok. Oh, shit. And primary, it's a mobile so that gaming channel. what made you channel. swap? Huh? What made you swap? Uh, it was unsustainable. Oh, okay. Week to week, talking about new games, uh, reviewing them, all of oh, that. Oh, so then you're very, asking about my games now. Exactly. Okay. So, cool. so just to give you the target audience, UK thirteen to eighteen year year old boys is the is the target audience. Okay. All right. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about it. So what? When what did you start gaming? Play? Yeah. What? Ga- oh. When did you start gaming? Literally, uh, the, I started because my um, my neighbor. Yeah. Well, in when I was in the Philippines, it was also like they played a little bit of Mario stuff like okay. that. Um, yeah. Uh, on the consoles there, but it was just like not really that big. Mm-hmm. But then uh, the deciding factor was when my neighbor when i was uh, back in scarborough uh he came over and he's like does your son play video games and my mm-hmm. dad's like no not really yeah. Yeah. and he was filipino this is why he even yeah. was accepted <laughs> yeah and he was allowed to ask about video games right he's like i think he'd enjoy this game what so game was downlo- it? so he downloads basically a pirated version of starcraft mm. onto my right onto my laptop mm-hmm. and i played a shit ton of starcraft mm-hmm and then after that, once I met my friends, that's when we played RuneScape. Nice. And RuneScape, RuneScape was like your second I, big yeah, game. Yeah, second big game. And I played a lot more StarCraft and RuneScape. And after yeah. RuneScape, it was World of Warcraft. Nice. And then after World of Warcraft, it was Did that ever Legends. impact your studies or no? No. No? no? no. But you were playing like hard. Oh, I was... Well, Six, dude, eight like, hours? Like literally entire summers gone. Like, yeah. like just entire gaming. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever want to be a professional gamer? My friend told me, my best friend told me, like, I feel like if you like invested the time, you can be a professional gamer. And what what's the in, reason in terms you of didn't go for it? Yeah. Because th- my parents would like disown me. <laughs> There's no way school was yeah. too like I was too good your, at school. That's your real. Passion. I was too good at school. Yeah. yeah. 
but so yeah so world of warcraft okay yeah and then i got and then after that world of warcraft it was like starcraft 2 okay and then that's when i was like actually like playing a decent bit and i was like of like a decent age okay and like i think i got into at the time like mid to high diamond okay when Very the higher ranks weren't released like yeah. uh when like master and grandmaster weren't out yet that's insane so yeah. it was like pretty good yeah like mid diamond was yeah. pretty damn good at that yeah. time Right? Do you know your rank in uh did they release your rank in a country? No, no nothing I don't think so. Me. But it was yeah. like damn, this is and he's yeah. like I think you could be Were you good. the only one in your in your school with mid diamond? Mm, there was some people in like plat. Okay. Or one one of my friends was like plat. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like not bad. I was like, dude, this yeah. is it and, yeah. then, and then League of Legends came back and I was like, Okay, I'm playing League. Yeah. Because uh, I the when biggest, did you play league in uni or in high school? In high school, because okay. the biggest thing, the, well, the thing is, I get like ranked anxiety. Yeah, I do not like playing ranks. I like okay. just having fun. Yeah, and for me, doing things competitively is not fun. Yeah, so that's why I was just like, eh, I'm not did you ever anything. stream your games? No, Never. I did not. I did not have okay. a good PC or okay. a laptop. I did oh. not have anything good. Okay. Like I've I've been a laptop gamer since like from then till now. Okay, and so like it, streaming wasn't even a possibility. No, not even a possibility. Not yeah. in the slightest. Yeah. Nor were my was my internet connection even that good. Oh, okay, I see. So yeah. my my now we have a good internet connection. Yeah. But literally, who doesn't have like a good internet connection now? Mississauga, like my parents' place. <laughs> what, they what still don't like, have. What's one. their internet? What's their download and upload? I think it's just one fifty megabytes. See, one fifty megabytes download is not. Yeah, bad. but like they don't have a gig yet. Like their area does not have a gig yet. Yeah, I think like, like mine is like three hundred. Yeah, like three hundred up uh, download. What are you playing now? Uh, I don't really game that much now. If okay. anything, it's just a little. But bit when you go home today, what do you? When gonna I go play? home, what are you gonna play? Probably. Are you playing uh, a console? More Steam or games. PC? More Steam games. I play okay, a lot like of RPGs. Okay. So, uh, Witcher Three was amazing. Yeah. Um, I play. I played a little bit of Dragon Age. Dragon Age was really good. Okay. Um, God of War. I'm gonna uh, see. I want to get a better laptop or a PC and build a PC before. No console. No, I don't play console. Never. No. no. Okay. Wow. So I want to get build a PC so I can play God of War, um, and then play a few other games. I've got Disco Elysium mm-hmm. right now, which is basically just another like RPG. Yeah. And just going through, just knocking out RPGs. Nice. I just love stories. What's your favorite RPG of all time? Witcher three. Witcher. Witcher three, 3 or or uh, or well, technically I have a Switch. Or Breath of the Wild. Oh my God, Breath of the Wild was so good. What's what's the re- why would you say Witcher Three is your favorite? What do you love the about story? It? The story and the gameplay are amazing. All right. Amazing, like. Uh, yeah, next level. Like completely far apart from everything else. Right. But that's also why I want to play Red Dead Two. You haven't played Red Dead. I haven't played Red Dead because I'm. Wow. I want to play. I want to have play it on a good. That's nuts. On a good system that can yeah. do it justice. Right. Because if you, because I feel like if you don't, if you play something on like low quality, you're doing it a disservice. You're talking like a guy who like idolizes Crisis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember when Crisis was the hype? Yeah. Like well, playing cause Crisis everyone, cause on, everyone wanted the max on normal FPS. quality. Everyone, yeah. is, oh, everyone wants it. Yeah. But that's the thing. Because I played God, uh, what was it Witcher Three on like low quality. Yeah. So I feel like my experience would have been a lot better, like enjoying the graphics and all that. Do you have Assassin's Creed on PC or no? Have you ever I, even tried it? I have. I have Assassin's Creed on my Switch. Okay, it's okay. I'm not really. You're not a big. I'm not a big like stealth big kind of guy. Okay. Like I played like a few stealth missions on Breath of the Wild, and right. that's literally just an adventure game. Right. And I raged. Yeah. Like my girlfriend like watched me. And she's like, "Why don't you just play it slowly?" I'm like, "I hate that. Yeah. I can't go slowly. Yeah. There's no slow mode. Yeah. And yeah, that's open me. How many hours are you putting in into? Is what. Into gaming a week? Not much anymore. No? I would say like less than five hours. Oh, wow. Okay. I'd say less than five so hours. So it's really dropped down. Yeah. But back then it was crazy. Like, you yeah. know, like imagine I get home and then literally from like, uh, like get home from school at like three o'clock and then from like four o'clock or five o'clock all the way to like 10 or 11 every Did day. Did your parents say anything or no? No, because they, they knew my grades were good. And then, okay, so they well after a they, certain point, after yeah. a certain point, because they knew my grades were good, and then like in the weekends it would literally be from like whenever I wake up to whenever I finish. Wow. Yeah, for, for like twelve That's hours. Nice. Did John or what's your sister's name again? Carol. Carol. Did John or Carol uh, share 
your your uh, gaming yeah your no. love for gaming at all no my no? brother a little bit he has yeah. he he took over my runescape account okay i like he still plays RuneScape, it old school runescape yeah so i made a account still plays i played it? it and then yeah. uh, i stopped using my account so i was like yeah. oh you could use it and then the man grinded a ton oh nice yeah. wow do you play any sports games no no nothing never been into that no okay. the slightest okay not in the slight not even fps fps i'm shit yeah i'm terrible i cannot do fps Oh wow! Not even Counter Strike. No, no, like I, I cannot shoot for the life of me. I played oh, Deceit. Wow. Yeah. Have you heard that game? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I can't. I couldn't shoot the monster. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't shoot the. <laughs> Yikes! Yikes! So you can imagine how Yikes. bad that is. Yikes. Yeah, it was not good. So that's why I don't play. And I get like a motion sick. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. Wow. Have so, you ever uh, put on like an Oculus Rift and tried? Yeah, that we did. Uh, my girlfriend and I did like a VR date uh, a few weeks ago. How was that? It's not bad. It's okay. just after. But now, underwhelming. No, it was great. It was amazing. Okay. But okay. the thing is, it's like, oh, it's kind of hurts the head a decent bit. You had a headache after? Not a big headache, just a minor okay. headache, because it was only an hour. Yeah. But I think it was also because uh, my my settings were improperly like the it wasn't probably oh yeah too properly set right like you really have to make sure it's good. My girlfriend right. was t- like she had a big headache. Yeah. Huge headache. Like because it wasn't properly set for her, like even more so. Don't the the guys help you? They do, but I don't think they help. Like they didn't care that much. No, they they cared, but I don't think I I think it still wasn't set properly for her. Right. Yeah, but it was just ugh. I wonder where Meta is gonna go with the dude. They put so much money into it, yeah, and they're like the monopoly in in that in that industry too. So if it does blow up, they're at the forefront. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna hold everything. I just find it interesting that like what is it? Meta laid off eleven thousand people, and yeah. then they're betting on the metaverse, which is this insanely R and D project. I it's I find it interesting how companies make choices in that in in that regard. It's like it's tough because they believe in it. Yeah, but there's and, a difference between believing in yourself, yeah. but also understanding your market right and understanding that perception so like well, it's, di- it's different from it's different from like uh microsoft being like their goal being i'm gonna put a pc in every single desk in the world yeah when that's a little bit more of the trajectory of what the future was gonna be right right and i think they had a good read on that yeah and i don't know if they have a good read on this i don't i don't think so i don't think there's any indication that the metaverse will be the biggest thing in the world because you're just not like what's the difference like i know you can like a big thing is like having meetings like around the world i don't know but it's zoom is good enough i'm happy uh, but it's still not gonna replace people like being to physically with each other and talking with each other i agree i was um i i joined this real estate group a couple of years ago like a year ago and they had this this virtual web summit where you could go in and like attend different conferences yeah. online and, and it, was uh, it was it was similar to how the metaverse will be yeah not not like, it because here's like a... it's it's cool don't get me wrong it's cool but like am i gonna invest five billion dollars because here's the thing in it and that's the be all end all because no, here's the close, thing yeah. your whole your you're hosting a meeting to have like a five billion dollar deal for a big company or whatever yeah. even yeah. even not even five billion dollars for a huge uh for a huge company deal or whatever, right? Yeah. Let's say you're just hosting a, a company meeting with other companies. Yes. And it's not gonna replace like if you uh, if you have a meeting through Zoom. Yeah. You see everyone. Yes. But you don't have the proximity. You don't have that relationship factor. No. Not you did not close. shake their hand. Yeah. Like literally, when you shake someone's hands, that's literally like chemicals flowing through both of you that you trust each other. Paramount. There's like yeah. yeah exactly. There's a huge difference between Absolutely. imagine making a deal with someone for any amount of money and you don't shake their hand absolutely yeah there is a lack of trust there yeah absolutely. you and you cannot get that unless you build a way like but what if you shook their hand and what there's virtually and they're like your your rpgs that's not it that ain't it it. it. unless they make it a way to like didn't you feel close to the gamers that you were playing with (laughs) unless they in runescape unless they recreate the senses <laughs> do it. Didn't you, know? you have best friends in League of Legends that you never? Well, we've I've actually met uh, quite a few of my online friends now. 
Yeah, but did you feel really close to them before you met them? Yeah, but would you trust them in the same way that after you shook their hands? No. It's a lot. Who knows? We'll like, find out. I don't know. But we'll thank see. you very much, Randall, yeah. for coming on. I yeah, genuinely for sure. appreciate it. It's been a little this bit. This was fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The a three-hour podcast, but a long, thank you very long much. One. For you just it. sit back, you know, play it on the road, something along those lines. Absolutely. So we'll be available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, as well as Anchor FM. I'll see you guys in the next podcast. Peace. Right. Sounds good. Thanks for having me over.